there. I think so. Is that how we do this? What did I what did I not do? That's always the biggest question. What is up? How y'all doing? Headphones. I didn't make sure about headphones, but those should be fine now. Magic. Yeah. Sad. So my uh, my civic glass, it broke. It wasn't exactly super secure against the wall, but you know, I was here <clears throat> and then I hear this giant crash and there was like no reason that I could see it would just randomly fall like it did because I didn't like bump that area or anything and then it just shattered. So that's no good. But anyways, welcome back. If you haven't been here before, we tint windows. We are gonna be tinting uh, this ram here and we have a full windshield, uh, front doors and rear, <coughs> full ram. And always the thing about these rams, as you know, are BCM problems, which is kind of funny because I actually had a conversation with somebody and it came full circle. It was really funny. So I had this, uh, let me see if I can find the post. So there was this post in my group, somebody panicked about a RAM windshield, but what was extra funny was the customer had messaged me beforehand, and this isn't even, this has nothing to do with me. This was like somebody saw my channel, somebody wanted to get their truck tinted, and then they're out of state, so they took it to somebody else, but they were asking me some about it. They said nobody wanted to take this truck on. Not this one specifically, a different one. We're gonna show the proper way to do this one. And then that's, that's when we're going to, uh, that's when we're gonna uh, mess up, right? How do we block from group? There we go. It's your fault. <laughs> I got my first focus the other day and I was looking forward to it because you always talk about how easy it is. That car destroyed me. <clears throat> they are easy. <laughs> Did you get the hatch? <clears throat> so the side seals on those are not exactly like, they're deep. So there's, there's plastic in the way, but the, the seals are loose. Ford seals are, are easy compared to seals. Like tinting is the difficult part. It's the hatch. The hatch part is going to make it a little harder with the spoiler in the way, but I do them with the spoiler there. I'm trying to find this post. That's the thing about my group. It's very busy. Let me see if I can search. Ram. No, it's pulling up all my posts. Can I search just in the group? Ram. Can I search by like recent? Oh, let's you see. Most recent. There we go. And it still sucks. Facebook. Facebook search is terrible. I don't get it. There was literally a post about it like yesterday I don't know I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can rearrange stuff maybe I have to search recent posts the back window rocked back and forth like over an inch I had to do the back window three times the whole windshield three times damn damn that sucks have you ever had any issues tinting a Jeep Grand Cherokee windshield? They're pretty straightforward, but I know any electronic. Um, just cover everything. I haven't had any issues, but that doesn't mean you won't. Okay. Can I pin mine to featured or did I already do that? 
unpin from featured, so I did. Okay. Here. We're going to try and find it together. This is the thing about Facebook groups. The search is terrible. It just doesn't work. So whenever you post anything, it, it gets washed into the ether. Flat glass. 12 hours ago. Star Wonderland. No. It was mostly a text post, too. 15 hours. This one was kind of funny to me. Sean. <laughs> Sean, you booked a $165,000 car, and you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Good job. You'll be fine. <laughs> That's how you learn. I just cover stuff up. If you have a suede interior, be careful of using tape over it, though. You don't want it to be overly sticky and, like, pull that off. But if it's got stitching and stuff, cover all that shit up because it can swell if water gets in between the stitching and the paneling. I, I don't know the car, but those are just a couple of things I'd keep in mind. Wow, where is this post? I probably scrolled right past it. Can I do like find in page? Um, let's see, RAM. There's one RAM. Ceramic. Wow. Okay. I can't find it. Anyways, we're wasting lots of time. So. It wasn't my post, but so there's this post, somebody, there was a customer, not my customer, somebody else's customer. There was somebody that was looking to get the RAM tinted, and then they got the windshield tinted, and they're like, well, it was fine until I started, like, it, it worked great until I started driving it, and then, and then water messed it up. <laughs> And it's like, oh, you didn't really do a good job with it then, did you? So when you're going to do these rams, you have to cover everything up. They, I guess they just shove towels in between uh, the windshield and the dash. And the thing is, there's more ways for the water to get through to modules and stuff. So you have to kind of cover the entire dash, cover up the speaker grills, and then it's helpful to throw towels over the BCM because that's what's really going to mess up. But the customer messaged me before he got it tinted, messaged me after he got it tinted, and then next thing I know, the shop is posting in the group about a RAM that they, that they tinted that is, uh, that is messed up now. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I see both sides of this now. It was great. But yeah, good stuff. Does it show like... Recent activity. Yeah, it's not gonna pop up. Okay. Cam works. Let's turn this sucker on. One, two, three, four. And then. There we go. That all works. Good deal. Tin and most, <clears throat> most windshield, even the Rams, never had an issue. The Grand Cherokees always had an issue with the last one, the blinker stopped working. I don't know. Uh, Chrysler's in general, yeah. I don't know where the BCM is on the Grand Cherokees. 
or where any modules are that would that would potentially destroy that. I do know. Oh, I think I forgot to up, update my titles. Oh, that's fine. Nobody cares. Hearing stories has me a bit scared on my 12 RAM. Uh, the 2012s, they didn't have the BCM in that spot, so you're all fine on there. It was whenever they came out with this model change here, um, like 2019, uh, that's when all of a sudden the group started lighting up with like, oh my god, does anybody know what's wrong with the Rams? It was really funny and sad. So I had pretty good luck with most of them until all of a sudden one day I like, I had to do it twice or something or it was just like too much water sprayed at, at the time. Like there was, there was a reason, like I think I had to flush something out and then it just got screwed up. And then I kind of learned from there, oh, it's really easy to get to. Like, it's super easy to get to. So a while ago, so a while ago, um, I figured out, like, somebody showed me where it was, and then I figured out that you can just throw rags over it and you're, you're totally fine. So I made it end up making a video on it. And it's just funny to me that that video exists and people can still watch it and then, like, still not cover it up properly. <laughs> like, you just got to make sure you, you cover everything. Don't take, don't take half measures on it. I find it difficult to get new customers despite, um, despite I've switched on all social media requests is minimal. What? Despite I have switched. I am a new company. Well, being a new company means that it can be hard for you to grow a business. Even with a soak shield? Yes. Because a soak shield just seems the windshield. So let's go, let's go talk about it. So I'm just going off of what everybody has kind of experienced, including my own. So I have some theories mixed in with what's really happening. Um, <clears throat> everybody, um, I think everybody thinks that when you throw a light dash towel on and then you put a soak rope in here, you've covered everything. Well, you still have holes here, holes here, but then you have this whole area right here that you're pushing water into. And then speaker grills right here. So dash towels can sign up, kind of like half cover this stuff up. So make sure you're gonna cover the entire speaker grills too because it's just like you're leaving it wide open. It's the seam, it'll butt up against the seam and then could go over, but this is like what I always hear is people, oh, I used a soak shield and I still had a problem. Well water is still finding a way to get somewhere just because you used something here. Oh, what the heck is this? Oh, I'm glad we saw that. I'm gonna wipe that off. This is a new truck. See, see whatever this, yeah. Um, so it, it's falling either in here, down here, it's somewhere. It's settling somewhere and then going all the way down to the ground to get out. There's this white box here, and the white box goes all the way up to here. Uh, that's the, the body control module. So body control module means it does a lot of things. So when it gets wet, and then the car starts acting crazy, those are some of the things that it all controls. <laughs> you don't want to short that. So we're going to cover up the wires. We're going to still cover up the dash and just everything. And I mean, still in there, there's a little bit of crossing your fingers. I haven't had an issue since I've, I've done all that. But just want to let you all know again and again, every time we get these trucks, you got to be careful and you got to kind of know what you're doing with them or else you're going to have some problems.
but don't just throw but don't just throw a soak shield in there and expect everything to be okay. Soak shield does a lot of good and you still should use it alongside of everything else that you use, but don't be overly afraid of them either. <laughs> Dodge pull is sweet. What's up, easy money? They all come out easy. They're all easy money. I don't think I've seen, I've had a single thing on here that has been difficult money. It's all easy money. <laughs> and as easy as they are to pull, they're as easy to tint. So that's what we're going to do. All righty. German cars are different. Yeah, they're a little bit tighter, but it depends on the car. They're not all that bad. You get used to them. good money. They're not that crazy. I mean, if you don't like doing German cars, there's more. There's definitely more out there that you're not going to like. When it takes up such a significant margin of the market, that's when you have to learn to like it. It is. We are preventing dust. It's a new truck and the rubber seals. Is it going to do much? Nope. But it might help with something. No, we're going to do Pro Classic on everything. This is like the th third or fourth vehicle from like a family. I, don't, I think they all bought Rams and they all getting them tinted with full windshields. This is over the course of like from summertime till now. What made you choose Geo? Um, life. <laughs> they ticked a lot of the right boxes. So we, as a, when I was working um, with a mobile company, um, we would find a lot of films. We would, like we were doing wholesale at the time. Um, so our goal was to find really a good workhorse film. So it was a good color stable film that wouldn't let us down after like three years. Shrunk well, looked well, and pricing was always more of a concern when you're doing like wholesale work because you got somebody else that's taking a piece of the pie. So We settled on, let's see, we were using like, when I signed on with them, they were using ASWF. And we were using like one of their less expensive films. It wasn't quite like Saver, but it was something like that. And it looked, it had a pretty, pretty strong green look to it. So I was never super happy about it. And then we ended up, 
bringing in Excel. And Excel was okay. But then we started having a bunch of problems with it. Like there were already some quirks with it. Like every role had a bunch of static on it. Every role was like super curly. Um, and But then we were using them for a little while. And then we had this catastrophic failure that we installed that film for like a month straight. A bad, bad bunch of film we installed for like a month straight. And we had nothing but comebacks for the next like three months. And past that, but it got a little more intermittent after that. Like the first month was just like every day we were redoing probably like three cars. It was horrible. So that's no fun. So then we were looking for another film to switch to. And like a lot of the entry level films were expensive. Um, so like, you know, we looked at Solar Guard, we looked at SunTech, we looked at um, like Lumar, Global, and like they're just things that we didn't like about all of them. Like with Global, it was always like for me at the time, like when you're just looking at not a, a film brand as a whole, but just one line of film to install, you look at them a little bit differently than you look at an entire lineup as a whole. So. You know, there were things that we liked about Global. There were things that we liked about some other films. And then we came across Avery NR. And we, we kind of, we really liked NR. Or I think it was NR Pro. So it was Sigma, Hanita, Sigma Pro. And it was like, we liked the color. We liked what it was like to work with. And then it had this real nifty feature that I think pushed it over the edge for us. Like they were newer, nobody had heard about them <clears throat> or most people hadn't. They, they were like newer to market. They're a 30 year manufacturer out of Israel. And what we were happy about was just like, okay, so they have like long term long, like they were long-term manufacturers, so they just didn't have a, a U.S. presence. We, we initially thought they were like Japanese or something, but it turns out they're Israel. Hanita Tech is literally like Hanita Israel. So we ended up picking NR Pro, and we were really happy with it. The really nifty feature about it is that it removes clean. So not only did it like shrink well, look well, was pretty easy to install, um, and came from a good manufacturer. Uh, it also pulled off the glass clean, like their architectural film does. So they're more of an ac architectural uh, manufacturer than automotive, but their architectural film does the same thing. It's it manufactured 10 years down the road to pull clean off the glass. So we were like, cool, let's try that stuff. And then if we ever have like a warranty or, you know, we're running around doing mobile, things happen. It's gonna be super easy to fix. And we were really, really happy with them. I got nothing bad to say about the NR that we ended up, once they came out with NR, we switched immediately to like NR. But, so long story to kind of get over to Geo, but just so you know, like I've looked around at like lots of different films. So like before that, I think we were using, used like <sighs> ASWF, Scorpion, um, Lumar. God, who was the main film that we were ordering? my dad's shop. I'm trying to remember at the time. Um, but we've looked at like a bunch of different films. And obviously you like browse Facebook groups to see what people really, really like and really, really hate. So, but what I didn't like about Avery was they had like a 
a solid entry film, but they didn't have like a, a pure carbon film and their ceramic film had haze to it as well. So it's like, as, as good as they were for the one film, I didn't really see, like we, we would carry NR and then we'd carry like a different line of film for the rest of it. So when I was looking into this shop, doing everything for here, I obviously wanted to do carbon and ceramic films alongside uh, alongside like a, a good entry level film. So that's when I took a good hard look at Geo because they had recently came out with C2, which is supposed to be a significant jump. And then we had a stream, we put it on the owner of the glass shop's uh, personal vehicle who notoriously didn't like lots of window films, but he actually liked that one. And I was like, okay, cool. If you like it, I'm assuming other people like it and I didn't have a problem with it. <laughs> so, so from there we just, that's what we ended up pulling into the shop. Oh yeah, I gotta hook up my tank. I'm still like half behind right now. I forgot to plug in my quick disconnects. Goes on the other side. There we go. Now we're supercharged. So this is where my glass was, and now I have a big empty spot on the wall. I'm really sad. My Civic hatch glass, it fell, and then it fell off the wall before, but I was here, and I don't know exactly why it fell off, but it did. All of, like I'm, I was setting up some new cameras um, like security cameras for the shop. And I didn't think I disturbed anything over there. And the next thing I know, I'm on like the other side of the shop and then I hear this big shatter. Sad, very sad. Yeah, cause it's like, it's like, a, it's not, not expensive really. It's a $165 piece of glass. It's just, if I ever have another one, <laughs> if I ever have somebody else with a Civic hatch, now I'm all of a sudden like, ah, it's okay. I gotta go buy another one now? Damn. But I hardly ever get requests for them, so I don't know. We've done a handful. I don't have a squeegee. Oh, I gotta sh sharpen this thing. But I don't know if I have, oh shit, there's so many things. Starting to leave some streaks behind. Did I leave it in the spot where it'll come out? Oh, I did, okay, I can fix this. So, oh, and naturally that's where I leave my, uh, that makes sense. So last time I used this blade, I was starting to leave a couple streaks behind. So some of you guys remember that I have this thing. This is my little overkill blade sharpener. Here we go. I wish to have a nice new blade. Simple as that. What's the little black bottles? That's a lot of squeaky monkey. We haven't used that in a little while. It's a hydrophobic glass cleaner. Basically, it's a, it's a glass scrubbing compound. And we haven't used it in a little bit. But I got a lot of bottles of it. Cool. So now, look at that. That's nice and fresh now. Sweet.
We gotta prep that windshield too. But there's more. There's more we gotta do for it. Because of the BCM. Can't have you guys messing up people's trucks. This, watch out for this. This mirror, I'm always reminded every time I go to tent one of these. This mirror, plastic, I swear, it hooks my edge every time. <laughs> so I go to roll this sucker down and then it grabs there and then screws up my film. Just be careful, it's something dumb. stuck there, but it did. I always cut once, and then I just do it again, sometimes, and then I swear, I get a better edge always on the second time. I don't know how that happens, but sometimes it does. Done one of those Dodge, but 2018 front windows, it was easy, but the gasket is tight. The gasket's not tight. Y'all are crazy. A little. A little at the bottom, it can be annoying to like get a shank into. So I always go from like a corner and then work it into the middle. An Audi is tight. The Ram, slightly more than the Silverado. It's okay, I'm giving you guys a hard time. Silverado or loose? Ford, Silverado. Why are people still pulling the Silverado sweeps then? <laughs> Explain that one to me. That's what I want to know. Why are people pulling? Like, I remember seeing a video when they first came out, taking them out. It's like, why? So this, um, it, it really depends. So shank, sometimes we'll just, some of these rams, it'll just be kind of blunt against this and it makes it seem like the seal is tight. Um, plus there's also like another one right underneath it. But if you're ever having trouble getting a shank into like a seal like this, just go from the side, just sweep. See like that, a little, little harder to get there, so just and then boom, you're over there. So, or you can just go like a little bit harder. But the, the style of it is, is just like a sharper angle. So some of them are a little bit more vertical. Some of them have a slight rounded top. The ram is more of just like a sharp wedge so it's not really that it's a tight seal in most cases. It's just 
the way that it it's like ugh, trying to get the tool in there it just blunts up against that rubber but just attack it from a slightly different angle and you'll be fine or use an easy reach or slimmer tool to pull the seal back that's another thing you can do um, so for example use like a something with a sharper corner to it and then get that pry tool in there and then you can like kind of leave it there if you need to I want to poke my head outside It's supposedly like a snowstorm. And there's like lots of wet snow falling down outside right now. I kind of just want to look at it, see how bad it's coming down. Because somebody told me they didn't want to bring in their car today because of the winter storm. We're getting winter storm warnings. So I want to look. I want to see. Oh. Oh my God. It is coming. It's all like. It's a little wet right now. DC Customs and Detailing Super Shattered Fires. I work out of my home garage and don't have a waiting R. I feel like that push a lot of my customers away. I know you worked out of your home garage. You have a mess back there? Yeah, that's the graveyard. Cannon. Yeah, we don't talk about the graveyard. <laughs> DC! DC with a five. Sorry, just realized the fog machines were unplugged. I work from my home garage, don't have a waiting area, and I feel like that pushed a lot of customers away. I know you worked at your home garage. Yep, and it definitely pushed a lot of customers away. Nobody is going to treat a house quite the same as they treat a shop. There's always that, like, it's got weird vibes to it. And I knew that, because, like, if you're looking around to get a service done, how many houses are you going to? You're usually going to an actual like company feeling thing rather than a guy out of his garage. So it's not that you do any worse work or anything like that. You can do a far better customer experience from home than you could for a shop, depending on like, you know, some guy that doesn't care at a shop versus you caring from home. That that has nothing to do with it. But Uh, I know that I worked at my garage as well for several years, and people feel that way, but I can't complain. It was good at some point. Yeah, exactly. It's just one of the things that you have to deal with. And as you grow a customer base, like, they'll just get used to it. And referrals, like, yeah, he's from home, but, it, like, you know, the more referrals and, and recommendations that you can build up, the better it will work for you. But it definitely hurts stuff like general search, which is kind of annoying. So, <laughs> if I name my company out of my garage tent, would that help? <laughs> I mean, getting a chuckle out of people, sure. But, I mean, there's not, there's not much you can do to get rid of that vibe other than going to a shop. I can tell you, as soon as I went from a home garage to this place, I got more phone calls because, oh, now he looks like a shop. I mean, people that are looking at me now, like, didn't pay attention before, or after, just all the new people. <laughs> it's just like, oh, this shop, there's this shop, there's that shop. I'll call all these places. So, there are um, still plenty of companies, shops, they run everything out of their home garage, and they absolutely love it. 
Um, what I can tell you is you got to try to do as much you can to break down that that barrier of feeling like, oh, there's just some dude working out of his house. So a couple ways that I did it is obviously one with the live streams slash videos that I do. And then two, making it look way better. So like that floor, I think, this floor, when I put it in the garage, man, it changed that whole feel. But it didn't stop people from feeling like they were, were going to a house. It's just like when they walk up the driveway and they see the space and they're just like, whoa. This dude really cares. I also think there's some things, um, I think there's some things beyond that. Um, like you can do videos that kind of like show your personality educate your customers, so the people that are kind of looking around, doing some research will then come across you, and yeah, you're out of a garage, but they get a feel for who you are as a person, and that's one reason I got some of the clients that I did. It helped break down that barrier a little bit more, but it never stopped completely. I mean, I still get plenty to, to this day of just people calling, asking for a price, oh, that's too expensive, and then they keep looking around. Like, that, that happens all the time to me still. So it just, moving to a shop widened it up some things. And then for people that don't have, like, you know, to the point about, like, not letting anybody wait. Yeah, it's a problem. I wanna say, Probably about 40 to 50% of my clients end up waiting for their cars one way or another. Front doors for sure, everybody waits for those. And that can be a huge part of your business. Another big part is just the full cars. And you know, it, it's inconvenient for a lot of people to drop off their car without friends or family and they don't wanna have to pay additional for an Uber all the time. So if it's just like, hey, how long is it going to take? Oh, okay, it's going to take that long. Um, but you have a waiting area, so it's not a big deal. But if you don't have a waiting area, that's what's that makes it even more difficult. But I wouldn't let them wait. P at one my home underscore zero F underscore SH one T super shattered four dollars and ninety nine cents. Nice work, man. Get what you pay for. Super. My fog machines are still heating up, I think. <laughs> Unless this button was not. OK, this is for both of you guys. No, nope, they're still heating up. <laughs> Pile. Pile with a five. How you doing? Nice work, man. Get what you pay for. That's true. You do. I appreciate the five. Thank you so much. Pile was a. Um, Pile brought in a Kia K5 a little while back now for the full thing with the windshield. I appreciate that, man. It's hard to forget that username. What percent are you doing on the RAM? We're doing 20 over all the sides in the rear. So effectively, you're gonna have limo on the back, 20 on the front, and then we're gonna do 50 on the full windshield. I get a lot of comments about the floor every time. Dude, isn't it crazy? I do too. It's one of those things that those floors, they're starting to become more popular now, but there's plenty of places that just have like dirty concrete floors. And it doesn't matter how many times you sweep your concrete floors, they still look dirty. So, when you can cover up that last eyesore in all your pictures and just like somebody walks in and they see a floor like that. Oh, what a difference.
<laughs> Nick Doolan super chatted $19.99. Try edges showed up yesterday. The level of excitement I have is so high. Nick. Nick Doolan with the 20. Thank you. What do you think about him? The tri edges, the new tri edges just showed up yesterday. These guys, heck yeah, tri edge. If you guys want to get these exclusive to the studio, look at how cool these are. These are super fucking cool. Link in the description. Let's see how this turn out. We good? Yeah, looks good. How long have you been at this shop? Oh, I've been here since October of 2020. So I started the tent studio thing in March. That was when we had our first job out of the garage. And then um, I fully intended on staying in that garage. Like, I was very against getting a shop. Because what I do is weird. I wasn't looking, I'm, I'm still not looking to be a full-blown shop. It's just more work. It's more work alongside everything else that I'm trying to do. So, I mean, a shop, a pretty traditional shop is like nine to five, whatever your hours are. Um, you hang around, wait for people to walk in your door alongside of scheduling appointments. You make sure you get there on time or early for people that show up. And then for the home garage thing, it was scheduled appointments and I didn't have the looming overhead of a building. And being able to do things from home, make that money, not have that overhead, and build the channel portion of it, that's what I was looking to do. But then the city said, oh, no, no, we don't like that. So then I had to even more try and build a shop. <laughs> I forgot to get a heat gun, so we're using this guy. I suppose we could use the other one. We should. Let's forget this one. I don't. We used this in the last one. It's an old heat gun. Look, I'm gonna grab not the fusion one. I'm gonna grab the craftsman one. <laughs> Why aren't you using the plotter? We'll use it for the back window. We don't use it a lot of the time. Patterns are always cleaner when they're hand cut. So I don't want to try and cut the plotter and then make up for it. I have that same craftsman. I'm gonna give you my real impressions of this one versus that Wagner one. Because this one I thought was modeled right after the Porter cable, and I like the Porter cable. I think this one is not quite as hot. Do you know how they found out? <laughs> well, no, I, I don't know for sure, but I'm not exactly super private about all of this. So it could have been somebody literally watching the live streams and then called the city. Local competition, uh, somebody that just didn't like me. I don't know. Could have been any number of things. But I do know I was a little more chaotic in the very beginning. I was tinning on a Saturday. 
Oh man, but I can't, oh that feeling. Oh, it was so cool. Dude, I can't even tell you. I remember my wife made some banana bread like the day before and I'm out there in the garage on a nice summer day with like a coffee. Just tinning away. And it's just like so relaxing and easy going. You can't beat that. Then you go to a shop and it feels like a shop again and you're like, ah. But here is really, really quiet. But man, you couldn't you couldn't beat that feeling. This guy doesn't get as hot as it looks like it would. It seems a little underpowered as far as the fan and the heater goes. It feels hefty. It feels good, but then I'm gonna have to try and snag the old Porter cable because mine died. Like I only get them to last like eight months or so, but I swear if I did half on the Porter cable on like one side and then this on the other, I bet you I'd beat it with the Porter cable. Something is nuked about that gun. It's just like restricted. My Wagner blew up in my hand. <laughs> Just a giant electric jolt, just like psh. It happened while we were doing the windshield on the Forerunner. I think this is good, I just wanna make sure. Sometimes it looks like, who's trying to work faster? <laughs> That's a good point. All right, let's get this. So the thing is, like you can call and talk to the city. Like there'll be a nice person that you can talk to about what you can and what you can't do. So I actually felt much better when I talked to them about it. Like, hey, I'm trying to do some work out of my garage. And they're like, yeah, that's fine. You can do them from the hours of like 10 to blah, blah, blah. But for whatever reason, just some when if a neighbor complained or somebody complains, I guess that's probably when they look at it differently. Wait, we got a we got a big problem here. <laughs> Shut up, classic twenty. Hang on, maybe not. Maybe I'm just crazy. This looks dark. This looks dark. I don't like how dark it looks. Please don't tell me I just did five. Oh, come on, son of a bitch. Really? Carbon, this is supposed to be classic 20. How the hell did I get five? Ah, shit. I'm so mad right now. That's so much work. <laughs> I mean, the silver lining is that we get rams, but all this just... Damn. It would look good in five. We get a lot of rams. Now I gotta try and sell five on a ram, but it, that stuff, I'm gonna set here all gently and then I'm gonna get rid of it. So what'll, what'll actually happen is somebody will, like I won't get a ram, I won't get a ram, I won't get a ram. I'll throw them out, I'll get a ram, he'll want limo and everything. That's what'll happen. Yep, literally the whole car. The silver lining is we didn't actually tin it in limo. <laughs> God, I just organized my rolls too and I switched the box, which means that there's a 20 in another box somewhere. Or, no, see, that's Pro Classic 5, too. So, what is this, 35? 35, that's right. Here's a roll that says 35. What is this? Probably 35. 
I don't think I have a limo quite that full. Yep, that's 35 too as well. Son of a bitch! There's no reason that should have been anything other than it was. And then this would be... This is Pro Nano 20. Pro Classic 5. It's definitely wrong. We'll find the right box for it. There's nothing in there. Where did my 20 go? Dude. <laughs> I'd like to have that problem of too much tint. Well, when you keep ordering rolls, this is 20. Son of a bitch. Well, I've got plenty of time for this one. I blame the guy that came in here for samples. <laughs> there, was, uh, there was a guy in my area that came by, got a bunch of samples, rolls were everywhere. And then I was, what else was I doing? I don't know, every once in a while, things kind of get pushed around. And that's when I run into problems. So, for those of you that are tuning in late, welcome back to the stream. We're gonna cut out a ram for the first time today. At least I caught it before it got dark. Before it got limo. That's what I'm trying to like tell myself right now, not just, <laughs> ow, it hurts, it's the time, I'm gonna forget where that film went by tomorrow, but the time, just doing all of this and then shit. Now that looks like 20. Damn it, chat. You're supposed to let me know. <laughs> I appreciate it. If you, if you sold the patterns, I'd buy them to keep them from going to waste. You can see what good, good mat patterns are like. <laughs> We're gonna tuck this way down. Do I hate tinting rams? No, no, rams are great. Rams are so straightforward. The only thing is always the electronics, but again, if you cover them up right, and cross your fingers. Everything usually turns out fine. They still shut off every 20 minutes, so that gets annoying, but hey. I got GeoShield Pro Classics, that's supposed to be 20, but when I look at it, I think it's 35, but I don't have a meter. It's definitely 20, you should get a meter, that way you know. Meters are super helpful um, because they take the guesswork out of everything. So we learned this. We learned this with the. Uh, <laughs> you guys. We learned this uh, a while ago. When you're when you're talking to people, um, meters are super handy. So you might not need them for you. But it helps identify a lot of things and take out some of the guesswork. So if you have a customer that's like, hey, that looks light, then you can literally just go grab a meter, throw it on the glass, and go, look, man, this is what it is. You just crazy. That came in handy so many times. Or when we would have sales guys argue with us. <laughs> Hey, 
DC Customs and Detailing Super Shattered $2. Let's help Master Matt for the time lost. Smiley face. <laughs> DC. Thank you. Um, DC with a two. Thank you. Help make up for the time. If you can buy back that time, but I don't think that works that way. If we were not doing the windshield, I'd it'd be fine. We're doing the windshield too, and that's what's like. Ugh, now I gotta cut out all the patterns again, and then we gotta do the back. Then we gotta do the whole windshield. <laughs> It's all right though. It, it won't take us that long to get back there, but it definitely is one of those things where you just slow down, take a lot of time, do some stuff. What shades are you using? God damn it. No! I could. Chat was saying I could cut out double patterns and then sell one of them. <laughs> do I have a shipping tube? If I have a shipping tube, I could do it. I just, I don't know if I have a shipping tube right now. What do four doors go for? I used to sell kits for like a hundred. So what do we sell like two sets of two sets of doors for? Use the old tint core. Ooh, you're smart. That's actually better. Shoot me an email, my tint stuff at Gmail, if you want them, and then maybe we can do something. That's what I'll say. I'll leave them there for now. They're shrunk. <laughs> They're shrunk, ready to go. All you need to do is install them. Doesn't come with the back window, just the sides. <laughs> Get some good pro classic 5%. Custom hand cut. I made them a little deep too, on purpose, but they were about to be installed. You'll see with these. I'll give you installation instructions too. <laughs> Cause we're doing the whole truck. That would be kind of funny. Hey, can you cut me off the patterns for these? I'll buy them while I'm tending somebody else's truck. That would be kind of funny. I don't really want to do that. But that does make me giggle. Okay, so on this one, this one is very curved this way. So you kind of look for where your straight edges are um, so this whole window is going to basically come down this way and start to shift, the, start to, to pull out this way. So my goal with these is to find where most of that isn't going to be impacted as it's going down, cut it, and then drag it over like it's a straight edge. And then we'll cut the whole top, and then we'll just play connect the dots.
So we're doing the same 20% over the back. So he's gonna have effectively limo on the back, 20 on the fronts, and 50 on the windshield. All pro classic. Easy peasy. Look at that. Oh, what's a two? What's a two window match? Um, Starts at a hundred bucks. So like from here to here, we probably could have gone down a little bit, but it's not gonna be a big deal. Basically from here all the way to here, you wanna smooth that out a little bit more, but you can still go a little wide with it just not wider than whatever this arc is gonna be. So essentially you're just following this arc here and then you can kind of match it up. But all of this is gonna be down underneath the seal so it doesn't even need to be perfect. You wouldn't ever see that. Exactly. You can't like even pull it back and shift the window or anything and, and be able to see it. Is this the black? No, the, actually it's just the stainless right now. I misplaced my other knife, so I've just been using stainless. I still like those better for the top edges by a little bit. All right. So hopefully all y'all fell asleep for the last like 20 minutes and then we we'll just like, what's that? Ah, Nothing. <laughs> this is where we were. We didn't just cut everything out wrong. I should turn on my uh, my ringer here. Should be working now. Hey! This is for all the super chats that we had already. Thank you. Should have called him. See if he wanted five. <laughs> So they, he already had family get more trucks done here. So he looked at what they had and then decided to go with 20. So if he wanted something different, but.
Now, if the whole thing was already tinted, <laughs> do you want five? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. That's where that conversation is a little different. There was a... There's this, always this big problem. Oh, man, it drove us nuts. So, I don't even know how this would happen. But... So, we would tent at my dad's shop. We would be doing, I don't know, 10 cars in a day. And sales guys have one job. That is to make sure that the shades written on the board are correct. So we had this dry erase board that they would write everything on. And then they would put the keys with the little thing. And it was really clear, like, year, make, model, shades. And then so we take the keys off. We have it written right up there on the board. It was real straightforward. And then every once in a while, they're like, you did the wrong shade on this. And we're like, no, it's written right there, dumbass. I didn't write that. <laughs> That's the wrong shades. How do you think it got there? <laughs> uh, so then you have like the rest of the work day and you have to redo a car, or they would at least try and ask the guy, and like, yeah, he doesn't want to change his mind. Redo the whole car. Oh, that, would, that would drive us nuts. What's the difference from nano ceramic tint? It's nano, it's smaller. It's the same thing, but smaller. No. So, like, the difference between this one and a, and a nano ceramic is better heat rejection. So, nano, nano ceramic, ceramic, they're all the same. I'm looking for a thing. Should I get to open another one? I think I got to open another one. They're all this, like, nano and nano ceramic. Or, no, I should say ceramic and nano ceramic. Those are the same things. But teeny tiny ceramic particles mushed into your tent for better heat reduction. Need clay bar. Let's go. Oh, I always like when they're new. All right, back to where we were, which is somewhere we should have been for a while. Should be wrapping up the last door by now. <laughs> so, still have a warrior heat gun, good job. I don't use it though. But I do still have it. I'm not a huge fan. I think if you want the cheapest heat gun possible that'll do the job, that, that's probably it. Spend a couple more, get the yellow Wagner, in my opinion, I think it's better. I've seen them for like 25 from Home Depot, and I've seen them for like 21 from like Menards. I think it's better. I think it's better than the, uh, than the Craftsman one too. Porter Cable, I guess I'm gonna have to see if they still make that and I can reorder it.
Quarter cable's a little bit more beefy. I swear it got hotter. Craftsman, craftsman imitation. I have the old Wagner. Yeah, like with like the circle metal end before they redesigned it. I remember those. I think I know a shop that still has one. Let's tint these super tight seals. The green triage, is it heat proof like the pink? Are the pink heat proof? Um, they're modeled after the yellow, so whatever the yellow does, this should basically do the same. I've, like, I have a habit of always buying the blues and the pinks. I like those. Um, I'll be honest, I can't really tell a hardness difference between those. But then when you go up into the orange, that's when it, That's when it changes a little bit. These aren't tight. I was kidding. If you go really wide on your patterns, though, they can stick. So that's what I ended up doing on this. I wanted to just make them wider. No good reason other than let's just make them wider. This has to be lumped with vehicles that are really, really straightforward. Like, so in the, on the spectrum of trucks, F-150s, Silverados, they're gonna be a little bit easier, but the Rams are not, are not by any means like a pain to do. I don't know. Maybe I'm biased because I'm literally right near a Chrysler slash Ram plant. And I do 9 million of these every day, which is like a whole lot of revenue, right? That'd be crazy. So it's really just like the type of seal that they are. They're more of like a wedge seal. So just getting the film tucked in to the very beginning can be a little bit tricky. And then it kind of like pinches back against the window a little bit, but I don't think, like this isn't like Audi tight. You pull it back, it falls into the place still. It takes a little bit of finessing. But if we're gonna put this on the caliber of Difficult. It just doesn't make sense to me. Like, then an Audi is like extreme. <laughs> so. Bippity boppity boo. Take our mean green. So smooth. Calling it now. These are the smoothest tri edges ever. And if you don't believe me, you can buy them and try them yourself. <laughs> The 
Prove me wrong. There we go. It's one window down. If somebody brings you your, their own film, would you install it? Yeah, I have. I strongly suggest against it. Um, I'd still charge um, the same amount as they do for a full car uh, starting. Because it's not my film and it's going to inevitably be different to work with. So there's always that little like, and then I can't warranty anything either because it's not my film. So it's kind of like whatever happens, happens. Whatever happens, happens. Nice, this looks good. Like all Rams should. <laughs> Does the mean green scratch film? Uh, if you wear it out too much, probably, but no. No, it is a, it's a tri edge. Would it look better with five? You guys in darker. So, yeah, the like the blacker the windows, the the cooler it looks. But you know, if you're trying to not be trying trying to not attract too much attention to yourself driving down the road, then like, you know. Give me that dark but legal look. <laughs> yeah, so see how much of this is tucked in here? And then as you roll the window down, can I get, I shouldn't even be doing this. Um, as you roll the window down, it falls out of the seal, but all this glass is already down here, so it doesn't matter anymore. So I can't do anything to like shift this back and forth, just slightly, so nothing that's gonna, yeah, nothing that's gonna stand out. That's just how it is. Not like that focus. It is gonna look good. Pretty much anything, any tint that you put on this is gonna look good. I guess maybe not five on the windshield and then like 70 on the back. That might be a little weird. Anything within the scope of normal always looks good. my 
My civic hat's... It's gone. Shattered. You know when you have a piece of glass shatter? I swear it multiplies. I was vacuuming up glass pieces and I still have more to vacuum up. But I was vacuuming up glass pieces for like a good half hour. They're just finding them all over the place. Do you have a felt strip on your squeegee? Nope. Nope, I was never a big fan of those. I tried them out for a little bit. They just wear out too fast for my liking. Ooh. Ooh. Look at that. This is the hybrid. So just a really smooth squeegee blade. It's orange on one side and blue on the other. Both sides are great. And it takes the cake, as far as my favorite squeegee blade goes. It's just the material. If they made like any of their other squeegee blades out of the exact same hardness and material with one color, like that, that would also be my favorite squeegee blade. <laughs> you need that 35% example. Somebody got five on their windshield and immediately regret regretted it. Yeah. There's like, you know, the darkness that you think you want and then you live with it and then you realize, oh, I don't want that. 35. 35 is that darkness for me on a, on a windshield where it's like plenty dark, stands out enough, and it's just so comfortable to drive with, it really is. Because it's, like it reduces, it, I don't notice a much glare reduction with like 50. I really don't. Yeah, we pulled these down way farther. Because <laughs> at that point we have a little bit of a harder time trying to get them in. So, 35 is like nice lighter sunglasses really. 50% is like, it's a nice shade for some privacy and stuff. But to be honest, I just don't notice a huge difference between like clear and 50 if I've been driving with it for like a little bit of time. Maybe in like the first day or two, but then you get used to it so fast. The tightness on these rams are unreal. No, I, so this is, Pulled it down farther. I went farther down by like a good half inch than I normally do. I'm just trying to keep these ones low. So if you don't want to fight with it as much, you just don't pull them down as far. That's really it. What do you think about Tint Depot's discount film? Which one? I think they're a great company and they stand behind their stuff. So even their Tint Depot, like whatever warranty is on it, they, they, they stick to it. They give you the same warranty that a film company would. So like if they give you a five-year film, it's got a five-year warranty attached to it. There's much I can't say about it, but it's got a global presence.
KDX. Uh, no. Global. KDX is some, it's a company I keep forgetting about. I actually don't know. Are they closely associated with Global? Or is KDX like its own thing? That part I don't remember. Cool. There we go. It's another window done. the discount film that Tim Depot sells. Maybe on like the very bottom. They have global in there too. We need a sip. We need a coffee sip. That's what we need. Canon. They do? They do! Yes, they do. Yeah, superior charcoal. And I'm, I don't exactly know exact what other films are. It's the spam call. What time is it? Oh, they're early today. Did you ever fix the brake light? I did. You seen? Should just be sitting there. I don't know where I put it. I have this. I have the broken one as a souvenir, but we finally got it swapped out. My order finally arrived after about a week and a half and overnight shipping. That turned out to not be overnight shipping. That was fun. But yeah, it's all settled. Everything's good. Swapped it out. He's happy. He had the same problems, though, trying to get the light. Just wash them like regular low soap and no dryer sheets on microfibers. Yes. So if you're washing microfibers, light on the heat, too. So like when you throw them in the dryer, just keep it on like a light heat. Just, just look at it this way. The more heat that you have, um, it'll melt the little microfibers at the end of each of those things. Like, they're like, Ooh. So they always say, don't use much. And then anything, any detergents that you put, like the, like the dryer sheets, they'll coat all the fibers and make it all greasy and stuff. So you'll notice a batch. If you do one with a dryer sheet and one without, they're a world of difference. Do you make your customers pay first or at the end? Have you gotten a customer that didn't want to pay you when you got done? Um, no, I always collect payments afterwards just because that's what most shops have always done. I, I think you could do it either way. Um, I haven't had anybody argue with me, but if I ever did, then I'd probably swap it, take a payment up front for it, and then do the job. I don't know. It's kind of like you see the same thing in like a lot of service things, like you know, mechanic work. Graphics work. Most of them will do all the work and then take payment at the end. Sometimes they'll take a deposit beforehand. I don't air dry mine is that bad. No, I don't either. It takes so long. I just do lighter heat. That's been fine. Microfibers, they get worn out. So to me, it's like if you do like a medium heat, you throw them in the wash, like I, I still use a regular like Tide or something, and, and they've been, well, and they've been plenty fine. So after you just use them for, for a while, they start to feel scuzzy, and at that point, you might just want to get new ones. It's kind of why I have a hard time overspending on my rags. So like you guys see the yellow ones, like Costco's got a big pack of rags, they have like, I don't know, like 30 something rags for 20 bucks. 
and they're pretty good quality. So they stay plushy. Um, they soak up water because some of the things that I really hate it, if you go to like Walmart and get the super chintzy ones, they just smear everything. They don't actually like soak up water. So throw them through the wash. I think I got it for four. I, you might be right. It might be 14 or 16. I always spend like a hundred bucks every time I visit Costco. I don't remember, but I've bought them probably like 10, 10 times or so. And eventually they just like, I, they get super scuzzy or I use them for like a messy project or something like, uh, like foam the walls or redo the showroom. So then they just start getting messy and glued or whatever. I can't read my screen. No fabric softener on high-tech fabrics. Ooh, I like calling them high-tech fabrics. That makes them sound so fancy. So there's this one channel called The Rag Company, and they sell lots and lots and lots of rags. And they have good videos on many things, detailing and rag-related. So they have some videos on washing the microfiber rags and took some time, watched those videos. Basically the summary of it was there's lots of little microfibers, obviously, because they're microfiber. And um, if you take a heat gun to that type of stuff, you'll see it like shrink up. So when you throw it through a hot wash and a hot dryer, you're shrinking all those fibers at the end. They're real heat sensitive. So that's where you just want to go lighter on everything. So I'll, I'll throw them through the dryer on like medium. That way they actually get dried out and it's not like I'm re-drying them like five times or hanging them up and air drying them for like a day. If you want to do that, then by all means do it. But now I understand a little bit more. Like I stopped using dryer sheets. I used to use dryer sheets on them and then I stopped using them and I noticed like a major difference. That's, that's, that was one of the biggest ones. Use a dryer sheet on a microfiber towel and you just destroy it. It's just greasy at that point. SUV 2000 Expedition. Um, that would start at 350 for all the sides and the back, no windshield. All right, remember we took this one farther. So let's see, so this doesn't get all bound up. That's what's been happening, gonna rewash them. Um, you might have to buy new ones. <laughs> you can try, that might help fix them. Um, but when the thing is when they start getting coated and whatnot, they're kinda, they start getting screwed up, period. So give it a try, you might have to go buy some new ones. Um, starting my tint business in Illinois, any tips? What film should I use to begin with so I don't have do I need a garage that's heated or does a non-heated garage work? Well, a heated garage is always preferred because it gets cold. But if you don't have a heated garage, you can make it heated with a propane heater. So a propane heater, like the torpedo heater, is not like one of those little cheesy sit in a corner, not blow hardly any heat or air heaters. Um, it needs to either be wired up for 220 for a good heater or use one of those torpedo propane heaters. Literally just Google torpedo propane heaters. It looks like a jet. It's crazy. They're super cool. They're not expensive and they'll heat up your garage really, really quickly. 
Because inevitably, winter comes along in Chicago or Illinois and freezes, <laughs> makes your garage super cold. So that makes your fingers all bleh, it's just, just tough to work, heat it up. Radiant heater versus blow heater if you don't stand too close. Yeah, radiant heaters are great, but you need like a whole setup for a radiant heater. You like need a gas line ran to your garage and you need good electrical. Or maybe you just need standard electrical, I don't know. But you need either gas for it. So I don't think you can do just like a radiant propane heater, right? Or that doesn't make sense as much. You want just a lot of air already. Chances are your garage isn't insulated either. the conversation we had about these are not tight and they're not so what problem am I having oh I just made these super wide super wide super deep and that is a major difference if you do that my garage isn't heated but with a torpedo heater it works yep same for me it was like a two-car garage. They <laughs> act like I haven't done them before. I'm pretty sure all you guys are cutting them wide. That's why. So if you cut them wide, yeah, you're going to have problems with it. Or you're going to have a harder time tucking them in. I prefer an oversized pattern, I really do. Ooh, I should make an emoji for the new triage. I haven't even thought of it yet. I didn't cut it wide. Well, definitely don't cut it wide. <laughs> I gotta add some emojis. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> I love when the tent is crunchy. Yeah, right? It's gonna make you feel good. Tennis ball or tape? Oh, I could latch them. But I used to be nice and like latch them so you guys didn't get to hear the ding ding. But now I like just driving you guys a little bit crazy with the ding ding. I don't hear it. You work on cars long enough, you just tune it all out. If I latch them, I'll forget to unlatch it and I'll close the door and I'll go whack. Oh yeah, for sure. So, yeah, a shop is definitely better than no shop. Um, I think I'm going to pull the trigger and get a shop. Home garage works okay, but a shop with an actual location, people finding you on Google, would make more people come through the door. Absolutely. A few key things 
is just give yourself like it sounds like you've been tenting from home so that's that's one advantage already is like trying to get your name out there the biggest reason people don't just jump into a shop is just the cost so if you have a way to like if you have a program kind of running already and then you move into a shop you're hitting the ground running and you don't have to stress as much. Or if you've saved up some money, it's not as stressful because like, hey, I'm okay to take a little bit of a hit right now because the upside is so much better. I'm gonna get a, sh like I have a shop in the works. This is when you really legitimize everything. So, So, I, yeah, like you're, it was, it's a world of difference going into a shop versus, versus tending from home. There's pros and cons to both of them. I really like staying at home <laughs> and just, like, you could walk out into the garage at night and it's just there and it's like, hey, I'm going to work on the stream a little bit. I'm going to change this. I'm going to fix that or whatever, right? With the shop, it's like, I gotta go drive out to the shop again. <laughs> Was the process hard with leasing? No. Um, there's, there were, I, and I couldn't even tell you if this is gonna happen to you or not. There's, what do you say? There's more corporate entities that own shops, and then there's also less corporate entities that, that own, own the property. So when I was walking around to a couple of them, and it's real easy to set up, like realtors want to try and get rid of their properties. So if you show interest, you're like, hey, I wanna look at this thing. Okay, cool, let's go set up in the time and the date and discuss. So some landlords do all that, and some landlords have a guy do all that for them. It just depends on the business and the size of the company that you're, that you're dealing with. So just like moving into an apartment, buying a house, anything like that, um, some of the companies will want to do some sort of like an income history. And all of them will want some type of deposit up front. So you have like a security deposit and then you have your first month due. So for this place, it was literally like, okay, yep, everything seems cool. Um, give us two months security deposit and then the first month up front. So it was like 7,500 bucks in change somewhere in there. Uh, to get moved in here, but they were like super easy about it. They're like, yep, sign this. What's the business name? Okay. Like they didn't care to do a bunch of checks or anything. Whereas another place, um, there would have been a lot more planning involved for that particular location. So it's like, well, there's still a company here, but they're moving out. So this place will be available in October. And then with what you want to do, um, we'll have to work that into the lease and some other things. Because like that's also something else that can get done, which is kind of cool, but there's no cheap way to do it. So let's say you come across a space and you really like the location, you really like the setup, there's a lot of potential there. It's just there's more office spaces in it. Well, these, a, a lot of these companies, like they want to tailor the space to make it make sense for your business, but that costs money for them to do too. So what, what they can do is then charge you for some of the renovations and then just work it into the price of your lease. So then sometimes you'll have an extended lease 
like a three to five year lease, it'll make it a hundred bucks a month, month more expensive or something like that. But then you get it tailored the way that you want. But the space I've noticed has to be above a certain threshold. Like you're not gonna get a space for 500 bucks a month and then they tailor it to how you want, right? Like there's no money there to be that flexible. So this space was already just office in the front, little storage area over there, and completely open in the back. And I'm like, I could start sitting in there tomorrow. And they're like, yeah, we just need to kind of clean it up, but if you want to clean it up yourself, uh, we'll give you the keys today. Otherwise, we'll get it wrapped up by the end of the week. And I'm like, give me them keys, bud. I'm in it. I'll do it. <laughs> and not a lot needed to be cleared out. It, it just, like, the floors needed to be, like, washed and swept out. And, like, then we vacuumed the, the front room at the time. Vacuumed up a lot of wumbo spiders. God, they were big. <laughs> but it was cool. I mean, the best thing, like, it, it doesn't cost you anything to start looking around and talking to real estate agents. Like, literally, that's, like, what they're there for. So if you just go, like, realtor.com was a pretty good one. Uh, LoopNet was another good one. Um... Any spaces that focus more on commercial real estate, and then you can start getting in touch with some of the agents or start looking at properties. And, like, they entertain people all day, right? So it's like you, if you want to go look at a space and start talking, like, ideas and how much it'll cost and whatever, like, they'll tell you. That's their job. Redfin. I haven't heard of that one, but thank you. I'll have to pay attention to that one, too. Because my lease is going to be up in October, and I don't think they're going to be... I Like, I don't know what they're going to do as far as raising it for a renewal, but that's one thing that happens. So I went safe side, and I'm just like, I have no idea. So I'm going to do the two-year minimum lease... And we're going to see how this all goes. Turned out I, everything's really cool. So I'll sign a longer lease. But when it comes time to lease renewal, it's just like an apartment or a house or whatever. Like, rates go up. And you don't own the property. So, but I'm hoping it, it doesn't go from 2400 to, like, three grand. essentially, is what I'm hoping for. <laughs> I'm hoping just for your typical, like, 100 bucks a month <laughs> raise. There's a place that I found similar front office space, and the back has a 14-foot garage door in the back. It's a business center plaza thing. Nice. Very nice. 2,000 square feet. Sounds cool. I'll tell you, depends on where you live, but around here... It is just hard to find anywhere with a garage door. That was one reason I jumped into this space. Like, I searched within, I don't know, 10, 10 mile radius from like where I was, just trying to find how many places had a garage door. There's lots of industrial, but most of it is like big industrial. So like we have 30,000 square feet to rent. Like, no, I need one of those little, like, auto plaza things. But those were all taken up. And then this space um, turned out to be available, but it wasn't my first choice. They had a smaller unit that would have saved me about a grand a month. But got scooped up by the neighbors. Turns out that was a good thing because it was in way worse condition than this unit is. So I'm very happy with this one. It's hard to find just big open space. It's good for shop. It's kind of annoying for uh, for video, but hey, we made it work.
good talk. Glad you like it. It's really not as scary as what it might seem, though. But having, like, taking it in stages really helped. So working up some type of a client base. And look, five or six months was not long to work up any type of a client base. It's just like being able, though, to get your name out there some and kind of figure out like, OK, I check in the customer. I give them an invoice. I do the job. It's like going through all those motions will take away a lot of the stress and over planning. So just get started and then kind of fail forward. You'll figure out really quickly. And then just people are people. <laughs> like you always hear scary customer stories. Most of them are just like cool people that found your business that are just like excited about getting tin. Cause you know, it's, it's a superficial thing. It's like they don't have to get their vehicle fixed. Or no, if your vehicle is broken, you have to get it fixed, but you don't have to get your car tinted. It's one of those things that you do because you want to. It's like going to buy a new computer or something. So generally, people are a little bit more excited about doing that than having to go in and like, oh, I got to get my windshield replaced. <laughs> like there, I, I want a windshield for as cheap as possible within reason that that has its own market too and its own problems and whatnot just like window tinting does but like you didn't have to get your windows tinted but then you're looking around and you're like i'm gonna get my windows tinted today so when they walk in and they're all bright and cheery it's like makes it fun Was it hard registering an LLC? No, really, really easy. And I took probably one of the more expensive routes. I did what a lot of people did, and that's uh, legal Zoom. You can look up how to do it in your own state. I'm not good with paperwork. <laughs> I have to read like legal documents like 500 times to even halfway understand what they're saying. And it's just like, if you have the time for it, sure. I, I was just like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And man, they take advantage of that. <laughs> they, they know. So I just went on LegalZoom. I had a name in mind, made an LLC. They file all the paperwork, and then it gets processed by the state. And then as long as everything is approved, boom, you have, a, uh, you have an LLC. It's super easy. That's how I did my, uh, wow, I am just, why did I cut myself? That's fun. Did the same thing with my trademark. <laughs> Is it that? No. What? I, how did I cut myself? I cut myself on something. Yay. I didn't even realize that I did. Had a Corvette customer, I gave 50% off because I wanted to, a Cor get, want to get a Corvette under my belt. He wanted me to take another 50% off because I was honest with him. <laughs> People. We'll take another 50% off. I, I hate people sometimes. <laughs> That's why I hate giving discounts of any kind. I typically don't. Just because it's like, it opens up this weird negotiation dynamic. And it's like, you know, people appreciate a deal. But then you, you get like hagglers that enjoy doing it. And like, look, I'm doing 
a very tedious service for you. So that's why it costs money. So if you're trying to short me on doing the job and then get the same quality, like that's where it, it's just like, mm. wow, I cut myself in a couple places. I have no idea how he did that. Mark it up 50%. <laughs> I don't like that either. I just don't. You see blood. Got in a fight with a ram. Yeah, I don't know, dude. <laughs> you saw what I was doing. Somewhere along the lines, I just got myself like a top paper cut. He was one of them. Front windshield is 50. Thank you. Inevitably. Are we not? We're not doing five on the windshield? I thought we were doing five. <laughs> he got somebody else that can do it cheaper. Oh. Then go! That's always so funny. Ugh. Cannon. These get annoying. They don't ever hurt any more than like a sting. They just don't stop bleeding. So then it's like, you feel like, ugh. It's annoying. I'll finish this in just a second here. People that want to deal drive me crazy. I don't want them as customers. Five percent on the yeah. <laughs> I'm constantly getting people looking for discounts. Frustration. Yeah, I get them too. I just very early on said no. So, you kind of just you also have to raise your prices too. Um, and what's nice about the automotive space is like people are always asking for quotes, so they don't know. Um, what their vehicle costs to get done at your place. Everything's very custom. So it gives you a lot of flexibility with raising your prices, but film costs have gone up. Everything's gone up. So I've had to raise prices too. Hey! KP! Oh, did it not go off yet? It was that early? I didn't see it. Where is it? <gasps> oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. Where is it? It's supposed to be up here. I don't know why it's not even popping up in my list. Oh, well. We'll try and fix it. KP, I'm waiting for it to pop up in the software. KP, thank you so much for the five. Will 50% or 70% windshield tint reduce headlight glare at all of the channel? Keep up the great work. Thank you. Um, it will. 70, you're not going to notice a difference. 50, you're going to notice a little difference. In the beginning, you really, like, you, and you get into the car, you can see a difference. But to be honest, 50 is still a pretty light shade. So I didn't notice a comfortable glare reduction until I was down to like 35, but 35 stands out a lot more. So if you're gonna go between the two, go with 50. Wow, it just took an hour for it to pop up. I thought it just broke. KP Super Shattered $5. Will 50% or 70% windshield tint reduce headlight glare at all? Love the channel, keep up <laughs> the great work. KP, thank you again for the five. 
I literally just got off the phone with a client who was waiting on their Maserati, delivered 200K, lives in an apartment, wants a discount. Imagine having a phone call. <laughs> Imagine how that phone call went. Just because you have an expensive car does not mean you're buying the most expensive film. A lot of times it means you're nickel and diming still. I've never been that type of person. Like with my lawn guy, I felt like he was undercharging, so I paid him more. Like this guy, it's just in a, in a raggedy truck. He was doing the neighbor's lawns, so I'm just like, oh, we need our lawn done. So I went out and I talked to him, and I was like, hey, can you do our lawn too? And he's like, yeah, sure, no problem. He's an older dude. And then I asked him how much, and he was like, 20 bucks. And I was like, how do you make a living? So I just gave him 40. But then I kept giving him 40 throughout the summer, and I'm like, oh, this is getting a little expensive now. But I gave him 40 the first time, so I felt bad then if I was going to give him 40 the next, or 20 the next time. So it's like I could have split in the middle and done 30, but then I felt we were stuck at 40. <laughs> but do, cutting my whole lawn for like 20 bucks, I just like, I understand you're doing a whole bunch of them and you're on a machine and stuff, but fuck that. <laughs> They got offended when I told them it was basically a Grand Cherokee. <laughs> you gotta record some of these calls. That would be hilarious. But I guess there's problems with that. Use a voice changer. Man, that would be funny. Did your parents take you seriously when you said you were gonna be a window tinner? My dad like pushed me into it. But he owns an auto accessories company, so it's different. Bro, oh, is that for Gator? Oh, you guys. <laughs> I think he's more proud of my window tinting than my military service. Wow, that's surprising. All right, let's do the rest of this windshield. See, my hand is still, is still bleeding here, and I just, it'll stop when it stops. So annoying. I didn't even know what happened. Picked up some film and then it sliced the top. Like, what the hell? <laughs> Guess we can go back and find out. But Jesus Christ, so annoying. It's just spraying it or anything. You just got to let it like bleed out until it stops. Or super glue it. That always feels weird. Then you get super glue all over your fingers. GoPro. There's a bit more depth to that statement, but yes, it's a true statement. Damn. I mean, I would have to imagine a big part of it is how you've taken to making your business to what it is. But that's cool. Having support, that's always good. Isn't like blow an air gun to clot? Isn't like taking an air gun to your skin like hyper dangerous? Is that true? They always say don't point an air gun directly at your skin. Cause like air bubbles. Or is that a myth? I remember hearing that when I was little. That's right, my dad's gonna put you out of business. <laughs> put tuck tape and towel on it, yeah, I know. What's the difference between Pro Nano and Apex? More, more heat rejection.
<laughs> Ew, what? I had two farm vehicles to tent, one with mice, one with mice turds. <laughs> or one with dirt, one with mice turds. That's fun. You guys that are doing farm equipment, good for you. I'm good. I'm good with not. You know, I'll let you do it. I bet you get this question a lot. Oh yeah, I get that question all the day. All the day. Carpet shield. Ugh. Ugh, I got a carpet shield. And then tuck tape for the other one. Or Lowe's tape, house wrap tape. Where I live in Canada, it's really not an option to do farm vehicles. That's pretty cool. I don't really live anywhere where there's a lot of farm vehicles. It's kind of hard to get them over here. And I'm not going to go out to them, so. You know, the middle of the metro Detroit area, there's not a ton of farming going on. Go outside of that, and then you'll find some. How do you get paid? Just take money from your business account, or how does that work? Yeah. <laughs> All right. What do we got to do? Pro Classic 20. Do I have another roll of this stuff? I feel like I do. I just don't know. Okay. So I'm pretty sure we can use this for the sides. But I think it was the centerpiece that didn't quite work out. Somebody remember that for me? Okay, and then we got to put the grams down to like, is it 57? Yeah, that should work. Why do we get up if we're just going to use the plotter again? Oh, it's slowing down a little bit. Cannon. I usually just send money over from the business account. I'm not the most professional when it comes to uh, paying yourself. That probably counts against me. There we go. Fan tip or cone tip. I've been running with the fan tips for a while now. And there's pros and cons to both of them. I'd, if I was buying a new one, I'd probably just get a cone tip, honestly. But they're both really good. Just some have little advantages. So if like you have to pick one, there's reasons why I like the cone tip over the fan tip. But if you... For most of it, you're going to use basically the fan tip anyways. Do they have it? Here's the question. Do they have it in RAM or do they have it in Dodge? Oh, they do have it in RAM. See, this is what a lot of companies change here. Some, some of them recognize that it's a RAM brand and some of them call it a Dodge RAM. I still call it a Dodge RAM just to cover all my bases. Is this a quad? I believe so. They all have the same back window, though. I thought the middle pattern was short. Three-piece slider, center. I don't, I don't think it's correct. Whoa, 3,624. No! All right, we're going to flip this sideways. 
why won't it let me make the edge flat? It's like, no. distributing why is everything sold out because y'all keep buying stuff uh, the trucks are ram now older were Dodge Rams yeah it officially changed but it's one of those like car things that nobody or most people I don't think pay attention to okay so we're gonna cut and go here and then if we did everything right it should just work Make sure it's not the Ram van. <laughs> oh yeah, and Sun Distributing is doing free shipping on everything. Go buy stuff, free shipping. I think the <laughs> I think we're a little different from a power wagon on this one. <laughs> See, the longer you use a particular software, the more you learn quirks. So cutting this for the first time, we would have cut out the center and then learned it's short, just like we did before, right? But... Now we know that there's a problem with the middle one. So if I could resize my patterns, I would then make it bigger, or I would give them a helpful suggestion that it's short. Free ground shipping is gonna be the new UPS standard. That's bold. Yeah, they're doing free shipping on everything now. They're trying to Stir up the pot a little bit. Except for international. <laughs> for obvious reasons. I have some Platter Depot shirts. Where's my, where's my keys? Oh, there we go. That's a crew, not a quad. Oh, you're right. Backlash is still the same. Checking out the studio possible today. Um, if you want to drive in this, I think so. Yeah, that would be okay. Because they're going to pick this up sometime. I got to let them know as soon as this is done. And they're going to swing over from a dealership. So there's going to be some time in between there. So, yeah, it'd be fine. I think it's just horrible outside, though. Aren't we supposed to get like a terrible storm or something? I don't know if it's that bad yet. <laughs> it's getting, it's getting there. I love this type of snow though. I wish it was just a little bit bigger, but whenever we have like soft snow coming down, it's great. This one's a little wet, but I like those really peaceful giant snowflakes that like you walk outside and then you're covered in like three seconds. Because it's just calm. It's not like that windy crap. I guess I'm more mad about the wind. Only going to get 8 to 10. Yeah, that's not too bad. Used to be a lot worse. We used to get that, like, regularly. We used to get that before, like, Christmas. What happened to that? 
I don't even know if I want to take this off anymore. I swear. Oh, I think we got it. Some of these rams, they do a good job and they put grease on them. And some of them, I swear, they don't. Ugh. So they just stick like crazy. I'm installing a ring camera. That's smart. I actually just put up some security cameras here. Oh no! Cannon. My bad. I just put up, where's the other one? I'm already on it. Where's my other one? Do you have to heat shrink those back windows because of the defrosters? No, you don't have to heat shrink anything because of the defrosters. You just heat shrink it because of the curve. But those ones, I like to do it just a little bit, but you don't have to. I'll probably do that. Can I get my windows back? Yesterday was 44, today was 10. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's all over the place. Why do people say turn on the defrosters for some back windows? I do. Um, there's a couple of them where it's really helpful. So 300s, chargers, challengers, they have really thick defroster lines. So I turn them on before I install the film. Because uh, if not, there's a lot of little, there's a lot of air pockets that pop up along those particular defroster lines. Most cars you don't have that problem with, but just like BCM issues, it's kind of like a Chrysler thing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, I don't know why, but they just put really thick defroster lines on some of those cars. You know when you get them, because then you'll see it and you're like, ah, oh, that's what he was talking about. That's right. Okay, so we have that pulled. You can call them peanuts. I don't like that term, though. Just like fingers. It's like, yeah, that's what people call them. I just don't, I don't like it. It's weird. I mean, sometimes we get too much into tint lingo, and then... I, then I have to explain what that tint lingo is, so. Peanuts. I thought that was the weirdest fucking term. But there was a guy from, there was a guy from down south that, uh, that came and got a job at our shop. He was looking for a place to tint. And that's where I first heard that. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, I don't know. My dad calls them peanuts. <laughs> OK. Weirdo. But then everybody starts calling them peanuts and bananas and all types of fruit. <laughs> oh, that's at least a little better. Somebody said they want a peanut butter sandwich. I could go for one, too. My friend would do this thing. He would have peanut butter and honey sandwich, and I thought that was, like, the weirdest thing. And I've actually had one recently. Slice of bread, peanut butter, and some honey on it, too. That's really good.
But I like what the other guy said too with uh called the called fingers because it's giving you the finger. <laughs> That's fair. F you dude. Okay, so this is going to be Oh, it is on the right side. Okay. So if I shrink this, I actually have to go this way, not this way, because I flipped them. Remember that? But I'm not going to do that. We'll just leave them flat. Oh, God. So annoying. Let's see, this worked really well last time. So in theory, it should work really well this time. I should just make it a habit to like slightly trim the center spot just a hair, because I swear that is what keeps this whole thing. Always that pinch there. That's all covered. Sometimes it looks like it's not covered, but it is. That's not, that's not, that's not, that's not, that is. Okay, there we go. So like right up here, it's where there's a lot of pressure from this thing. Pull it back, try and squeegee it all up there. Trim it off or heat it out if you have to. I prefer this in plotter cut too. It makes it just real straightforward and easy. As long as those cuts line up, I mean, that's the whole thing. As long as the cuts line up, I'm super happy. I don't have a single problem with it. The problem is that I'm fighting with patterns that just don't fit. So, in this case, it's good though. Patterns are nice. Except for that, <laughs> except for that center one. But this uh, metal, metal framing here, for a long time, Dodge had a really nice, easy, easy going back split window and then they decided to put this whole thing and pinch it right against that border I don't know why they did that but they did I always install the middle first <laughs> middle is I don't know how short but it's too short it's just not wide so I think what they were trying to go for is just block out the light with the thing closed. But the thing is when you, like inevitably you're gonna open that back slider and you're gonna see like one inch gaps on both sides. And it just looks funny. I don't like it. I don't like it. Where's my scroll? Can't you scroll? There we go. Where did I get those trash cans? <laughs> those hyper small trash cans. <laughs> The trash cans that I should have replaced a long time ago. Uh, I think I found them online. I don't remember where, though. So I wanted a separator. I wanted to put rags in one and then trash in the other. And then I just don't do that. But I like the stainless look. I should just get bigger, obnoxious trash cans, and I do have them, but 
they're just over there. They're just regular black trash cans. There was like these perfect size Costco ones for like 50 bucks each and I would have bought like five of them. But unfortunately, they were no longer available when I went to go buy them. And I haven't seen them since. Most sensor trash cans are like 80 to like 100. Some of them way over that. That's cool. Got red ones to match my peel board. I like little touches like that. Whenever you're ready, I'll head out. Oh, just look at how long it's gonna take you to get here. You can wait up front, I don't care. So uh, it's gonna take me probably like a half hour or so to do this windshield and then wrap up and stuff. Should get bright green ones. I just don't like how trash cans always sit in the way, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll do something sometime. All right, so what do we do? We gotta do that centerpiece. Then we gotta do the windshield. I almost forgot about that centerpiece. It's gonna just jump on this windshield. <laughs> I think he wants 5%. <laughs> Well, I do have 5% patterns right there. That's too tall, which will be good. All right. Inside cutting. Oh wait, you know what? This is bordered. And it was still short. I guess I wouldn't have a one inch border, but I remember it being short. Okay, there's no, definitely no excuses on this one. What the heck? I forgot this was square. I didn't even take a second to look at it. I just assumed. And you know what happens when you assume. I remember I heard that for the first time and my mind was blown. Then I heard it 9,000 times after that. I was like, oh, everybody knows that saying. We did at one point for this one. It didn't end well. That's why. Everybody asks me about plotter like they ask about ceramic film.
Like they're all the same. They're not. Some better, some not. So on this one, I don't know. The center one didn't work so well. I didn't care to find another software at the time. All right, this a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Yay! There we go. We got our pattern. I think it's got to be a little bit shorter on the right side than the left side. Hopefully we don't lose which one's top and which one's bottom. I don't think it would matter. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, see there's this. I should have comp for that. But it's okay. We'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, look at that. We can just pull this even more sideways. So this was definitely short somewhere. I just don't remember where with like the plotted pattern. And I don't want to find out again. Do you prefer a dash towel over soak rope? Use both. I prefer a towel because it's just easier to work with, but there's reasons why you're gonna to want to use both. Especially on a truck like this. <laughs> Dap. Dap is good. But try and get it. Lol. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. I just stop using a soak rope? Well, I don't use it on every vehicle. I use it when it matters the most. There's vehicles where you can be reasonably confident. Like, they weren't a thing for a very long time, and people started using them when they, you know, when they were invented. So, you can still tint plenty of vehicles without it, but you're always taking on some type of risk with it. So on something that especially is a red flag, we're definitely gonna use it. On something that's like extra tight there, but I haven't heard of any problems with those particular vehicles, then we can be a little bit more free with it. It's not gonna matter quite as much. Is there still potential? Yup. Yup, yup, yup. We use DAP. We use DAP, it's nice, but now when you get application errors and it won't load at least one to two times a week. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that can happen. The tri-edge tri looks crispy. Thank you. Don't they? Um, hoping might come in today so I can use them on camera tomorrow at OG. Oh my God. Oh, that would be special. I'm surprised they didn't get there already. I always do like, so there's faster shipping and there's regular shipping and I did the regular or I did the faster shipping, so I'm surprised that it hasn't got there already, but with so many, ugh. That has to be annoying. They better get there. We should check. Ooh, I'm gonna do that. 
Cannon. Might have a tool. Mine showed up to Cali in two days. Sometimes UPS, USPS just drops the ball. Um, I'm gonna look. Bum, 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 bum. You said it was delivered. Did you get it? Did you get it? Because it definitely says delivered. <laughs> uh, I hope so. Your desk looks like mine, tools everywhere. Anytime I have a table, that's what it turns into. You just like set one thing down and before you know it. The most annoying part for me. <laughs> doing Matt's 800 mile E92 tomorrow. Oh, damn, nice. The one that he's giving away. I think I saw that. That's cool. Damn, that's really cool. Anytime I have a flat surface. And so it, the most annoying thing is like I put things that I need and then things get messy. And then I'm like, ah, I got to sort everything. And like, this is kind of garbage, but I don't want to throw it away. Dude, I think they need to change their color line up here. Look at that. Oh, I like that. That's studio colors right there. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I like that. Okay, 50. Where's 50? Pro Classic. Pro Classic. Pro Classic 50. Are we doing 05 or 50? This roll is open. That's a good thing. God, my hand. See, it just doesn't stop. Everything that you're doing now is just... Then you just waste time. It's USPS. Sometimes it'll show up delivered, but then be delivered the next morning. It says it was delivered yesterday. I don't know. They're usually pretty good. They're good about the USPS envelopes. I've had major success with them. And they make it easy. We're doing five. Five-o. Oh. oh. He's keeping one and then he's giving one away. Nice. Five O special. Okay, Ram windshield. We still got to cover things up. <laughs> 
I do windshields, or I do mobile windshields be flying. Do you do them outside? Also work at the shop when they're busy. Do they make you do stuff outside? Are you gonna use the rope for this one? Yes. We're gonna use a rope, we're gonna use a dash towel, and then we're gonna throw some rags because we're gonna do the proper way of covering these up. I wouldn't tent outside. And I still did mobile, but I don't consider, mobile is just going from place to place. But having the tent outside, yikes. like non-stop. It's like a hit and run. That's why I stopped doing sedans, unless I'm at the shop. Well, that's good. All right, we're gonna go ahead and shrink this thing first. We'll get it cut and then we'll go ahead and we'll prep the whole inside. Oh, I think that's my extra battery. I knew it was close by. It's just on the floor. Should I get a Stein L heat gun? Should I just finally fork over the money and get like a 200 something dollar heat gun? I think I should. That's like the last heat gun that I haven't really tried that you can still currently buy. Like the $200 gun Steinel ones don't last any longer. Really? Or are you just hard on your tools? Cause I know some people are really hard on their shit. <laughs> we'll throw them on the ground. I always let them bungee. The equalizer. Weldy. $15 farm and fleet heat gun. You guys have interesting suggestions and I haven't heard of some of them. Because If you're gonna buy a better gun, it also needs to last longer. So if it lasts the exact same amount of time, then 
there's no point. This one, this one is very similar to the Wagner, it just feels chunkier. I don't think it's better though. And I really like the Porter cable. I swear this is just not the same. Just a little slow. It's smooth, it's even, it's got a nice amount of heat, but if you wanna get this thing cooking, you're kind of moving at whatever pace this thing is letting you move at right now. Where, what I like about the Wagner's heat is just it gets a little bit hotter. And so when you want to toast that film and get moving, you can. It's still a little bit of a toy, but... Wait, heat gun? It's, my go-to is still that cheesy little Wagner one. It just ticks all the right boxes. It's got a dumb amount of heat for the size. It doesn't blow all that much air, but it doesn't really need to. This seems to blow a little bit more air, but doesn't necessarily get hot to compensate for that, so you're kind of just moving at a slower pace. I've done side-by-side -side comparisons between this one and the other one, and it took me a full, like, two minutes longer to use this one than it did the Wagner one. So, you really have to put that sucker close to it. So... Is that a Milwaukee? No, I heard the old ones used to be really good. And I saw these like teardown videos. Um, the old ones were actually manufactured by a actual heat gun company. So it would make sense why people liked them, but now they're not anymore. They're all just kind of cheesy in their own right. Oh, interesting. Glad I'm not alone. I like the Porter cable better than the Craftsman. The Craftsman are inconsistent. That makes way more sense. I would have sworn they were the exact same thing until I saw the light that I bought. So there's this Harbor Freight light. Well, it's in, it's in a few different places. There's basically this like white label light you can find at like Menards, Harbor Freight, and it's awesome. Gets super bright. This guy, it's dead. <laughs> Good job. Way to sell it. Okay, um, so we're gonna let this thing charge. <laughs> I've had this one for a couple of couple years now. Is it not? It always stays red when it actually is charging. There we go. And we're just going to leave it like that. Okay. So that one, you can recharge it. This one looks like the Craftsman. Like, it, it looks identical. It's actually a little bit smaller. Um, the light is the same size. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. There we go. But this thing takes three AAA batteries. It does not come with any rechargeable batteries. It doesn't come with the USB. Um, and then you always have to press it three times. So one, two, three, and then it'll shut off. Where that one is smarter. So if you press it once, you wait five seconds and then you go to shut it off, press it again, it'll just shut off. This you always have to cycle three times. Triple A's, super dumb. So, looks like the same thing, but it's not. So that's when I'm like, hmm, I wonder if the, I wonder if the other one is gonna be the same. 
or the heat gun. And sure enough, I swear it's slower. <sighs> Ryobi has a battery powered heat gun. Anyone try it? Yeah, I have. It's not good. It doesn't get hot enough. Um, power is the biggest obstacle for batteries. So it is a heat gun and it'll get toasty, but it just, they're powering everything off of it. So they just can't put as much heat out. There was a guy that was using it for vinyl work and he said it's really handy to keep by the car for small stuff, but I tried it for window tint and it just, yeah, it's not worth it. The $20 Wagner gets to suck so much more power out of a wall versus trying to get that type of power out of, battery, out of a battery, you just can't do it. Not yet, anyways. So really, if you want like a total cord-free heat gun, use a torch. Other than that, Porter Cable or Wagner. Those are kind of my go-tos. Everything else has been disappointing. There is an honorable, honorable mention for the Fusion Heat Gun. I just don't vibe with this very much. <laughs> That's as, this is as good as I can say it. Some people that really like the way this thing blows out a ton of air, it gets really hot, but if you try and use this the same as a regular heat gun, it's gonna let you down. So, honorable mention there. Yeah, it is harder to use a blowtorch, and it freaks people out. It's fast, and it's fast, and you can do a lot with a torch. And I remember, I remember going through the phases. So people very occasionally would post a video of using a torch, and it was kind of like, why? That's unnecessary, interesting, cool, but like, why? <laughs> And then Rick, he really took to using one and used one straight for quite a long time. And it's faster and there's reasons why it's actually pretty good. It keeps, the glass actually stays cooler because you're moving so much faster with it. But that being said, if you're learning, I don't think you need to. You're not exactly losing much time at all with a heat gun, especially if you want to push that heat gun. You can shrink plenty fast with it, so. Oh, do some people worry about that? Really? If a client is allowing to their home, they will never get upset about you plugging into their outlets. <laughs> I would love to meet a person that did. <laughs> I didn't, that didn't even cross my mind. Man, that would be funny. Are you gonna refund me the electricity that you used on my vehicle? I'd be scared to ask them. No, come on. Just do it. It's an outlet. <laughs> oh my God. Somebody asked for a discount because I, I asked for a garage and outlet. Jesus Christ. Next customer.
wow, I would immediately stop catering to those people if... <laughs> That's a thing? Okay, what are you guys charging for a car? Let's start there. Let's get, let's expand on this a little bit. What are you guys charging for a car? There's a couple of people in chat that are getting pushback from using people's electricity. <laughs> That's so weird. I know there's people that, like, somehow get it in their head that, like, a mobile, mobile service can be, like, an economy thing. I think that that's just crazy. They're like, well, it's my house, so isn't it cheaper because you don't have overhead? And it, it's like, no, I got to come out to you. It's... That's who you're catering to, though. I charge 200 for a sedan, no front windshield, 260 for an SUV, 220 for a truck. All carbon. That's not bad. I'm a little more for carbon, but I don't think that's an a that's a scary price by any means. I don't give them an option, I just tell them that's what I need to complete the install. Yeah, in that case it's like it's critical. It's like, yeah, you want me to tint your car, I need electricity to do it. Like I I I would be the same way. I wouldn't even give give it an option or leave it up for discussion. If they had a problem with it, I would pack up and, and leave. <laughs> I wouldn't even start that debate. I would get a really weird look on my face and be like, wait, seriously? You, you have a problem with me plugging a heat gun into your power outlet? It's, it's part of having the garage for me to tin it in. Like, it's just, it's part of the work. Because, like, I mean, think of any other job. <laughs> like, you're going to go in and paint a house. Don't you need it to be warm enough to paint the house? Like, are you charging the guy to heat up the house so I can do a good job? No, it's just the house is warm. <laughs> Fuck, dude. <laughs> oh, I just can't even believe that's a thing. People are weird. Okay. Um, are we going to do the soap shield? Pretty sure we are. We put that over on the other seat, right? Well, we did. We didn't even have to move around. So sometimes I'll do the soap shield and then I'll do the towel. I feel like... I should do the soak shield and then the towel. So hopefully this will keep it pushed down a little bit. So it was kind of funny. The guy that talked to me, this is a soak shield, okay? <laughs> what I didn't get was somebody told me they tried the soak shield, like a customer said the shop tried the soak shield and it didn't fit. This is a soak shield. So like, what soak shield are you using? This is the regular one. And if it was the big one, I could still get that to fit in there. I don't know, this is the OG size. <laughs> so, I don't know, put the towel in, get a rope tucked into it. If anything, the rope is actually helping keep this towel down a little bit more. This towel is, I like this towel, this towel's good. Hit up, uh, so if you want this stuff too, Sun Distributing carries a lot of dash towels and soak ropes, soak shields, the official ones. 
So definitely check them out for like a good dash towel and stuff. That's that's not like this is a newer one we're trying out. This is 70 inches wide. It's 30 or 35 deep. I like the little bit of plushiness to this. This thing's I'm very happy with this towel. Okay, now as for the other bit, we need to tuck up some rags. Removing it, has it ever pulled the film back? Yeah, so that's sometimes why I don't like using them on super tight windshields. On this one, it's, uh, it's a necessity though. Do you think the five minutes, do you think the five minutes that I gave this uh, Five minutes I gave this to charge is enough to turn this thing on, or is it? No, it came loose again. I'll use the other one. I'll use my AAA Craftsman one. <laughs> Damn it. You get this thing all set up. This connector's bad. I'm trying to talk you up, Harbor Freight Light. See that? There we go. I'm trying to talk you up. What towel is that? I don't know if they have this one in particular listed, but they've got a lot of dash towels very similar to this one. Um, you can also ask them, because we're trying some, some different ones out right now. But they're, they're one of the few companies that seem to be on top of it when it comes to dash towels and ropes. Okay, I'm thinking. So towels, light, that's what we're doing. All right, let me see. Can we, we're gonna put up some rags. I'm gonna see if I can angle a camera here for you guys. So this is the RAM. That's how it's covered right now. See, we made sure the speaker grills and all that are covered. This right here, that's the BCM. This whole white module that goes all the way up here. So I'm gonna do as best as I can with what we have to work with. Sorry, the mic's gonna be a little light. So this is the BCM. There's wires up here. And you can shove a towel, you can swing your arm in, and you can grab that towel and drag it over. So don't forget your towel after you've done this. But what you're trying to do is just all the water comes down and then soaks up in there if there's any that's left behind. So that's what she looks like. Look at all those connectors. So that's really like, that's really the extent that I go to to cover these things up. Take a few seconds, shine a light there, throw up some towels. I didn't have to take anything apart to even do that much, which is crazy to me. Because they're real, like they're just real accessible. On chargers, and challengers, you can have the same problem, but over on the passenger side, and they cover it up with paneling. So you'd have to take apart the kick panel in order to get to it and do the same thing or unplug it. On this one, it's just your own laziness that's keeping you from covering that up. Like, oh, I gotta lean under the dash. It'll probably be fine. And it might be. But when you have this much covered, everything should be okay. So now we're going to actually go ahead and tint this. 
And if we have any issues, then <laughs> oops. <laughs> Big oops. So that's where there's always a little bit of like cross your fingers with these. Cause like, you know, I didn't map out the water perfectly. I'm just going off of a lot of hearsay and my own experiences. So if there's something else on a slightly different one that's getting wet, hey, maybe that's a thing now. But that's, there's always that potential there. Doesn't matter what it is. I remember I have to pull seals out of the new Durangos. So I actually have a new Durango coming in on Saturday. And there was one time I got a little module wet and it started doing the exact same thing. And that was just from two door windows. So another thing you might want to be conscious about is shoving all the water that way. I don't know for sure, but you know, you're pushing water in behind that pillar and you didn't cover behind that pillar up. So there's always possibility there. I'm just gonna scrub one side and then the other and then we'll do one big once over. So we're not going to mess with this either, I'm just going to leave that there. It's a big camera system that I don't want to recalibrate from disassembling that. Are you going to do a live stream on the Durango? Yeah, on Saturday, a couple front doors with the, with the windshield, we'll do that. There's also potential on that Durango. Something can get wet, throw a check engine light. I've had that before. Dodge, Chrysler, they are always red flags for any of this. You just gotta always do a little bit more. The only reason that I really take these on um, is because I got so many questions for them. Like, they're, they're such a big part of the business. Like, if somebody wants a windshield tinted, <laughs> for a long time, it was, like, it always seemed to be 300s, rams, all these things. People wanted these tinted. So, just kind of work through whatever the issue is. And then cross your fingers that you get it on the first time. If I'm doing a back window and I got fingers that pop up on the bottom, is that from over shrinking? No, under shrinking. It needs to shrink more. Anytime you have fingers pop up at the bottom, or anywhere, it's just the film needs to be shrunk a little bit more, or you push things in a way that kind of made more material gather in one spot than another. No magic there. So effectively what you did is dried it out and got it to stick, and then it kind of slowly starts to shrink it a little bit too. But you need that film to be flat on the bottom. If it looked flat and then you went and shrunk it all, if, sorry, there's one little thing there I gotta touch up. Um, I meant to do this earlier, where's my knife? If 
if there's one slightly toasted that edge, see that? See that little edge right there? Slightly toasted it. It's better to just cut it out than try and fix it or anything because the liner grabs to it, a whole bunch of stuff. What were you talking about? Squeegee this all off. Oh yeah, the little fingers. That always is no fun. Had a little, had little fingers, a couple little fingers not go away. It can happen. So the best way to try and take care of it is to, to literally just heat up the outside. But there's also something funny that happens along with it. There's a lot of water down there and all the water settles downhill. So it's no surprise that of all the spots that you have little fingers to pop up, it's typically the bottom. All the water kind of like sets in that area. So you need to dry it out. But as you're heating it up and there's water there, you're creating a lot of like steam, essentially. So I've had it where if you heat it up, oh, we're talking about heat again. If you heat it up and then walk away for a little while, come back, throw some more heat at it, you gotta give it kind of time to like settle and dry out. There's more of a chance it'll, it'll settle and you can get that out. Still gotta be warm, but you'll spend like half an hour trying to touch that up and it just won't lay down and it'll be like the smallest, most irritating thing. And you're like, come on, come on, come on. I don't wanna redo this. <laughs> there is a good amount of time that you are better to just literally redo the whole thing if it's not like a quick fix like that because then you'll spend another half an hour to an hour trying to fix it when you could have just pulled the film off and just redid it. That's a tough choice to make, but that'll happen too. But it would happen sometimes with like chargers in particular. There's a handful of other vehicles that I can remember. Um, random one-offs, but When you have a good tint glue as well, that'll help it to stick. So I remember one of the most frustrating films ever on the inside was Scorpion. <laughs> I don't even remember which line it was from Scorpion, but we were, using, we were using some film from them while somebody was like out. We were helping out at a shop and he had Scorpion, so we were just using his Scorpion and, and helping him along with some of his appointments. And then I had some fingers pop up at the bottom. It was on like a 200. And I just couldn't get those things to like lay down at all. So whenever I tin a window or shrink a window, I'll go over all the edges just to make sure that they're like 100% locked down. So you shrink it, cut it, and then re-shrink all the edges. That's a real good way to make sure nothing's gonna pop up at the end. Put a little heat at those edges and you'll watch little things pop up and shrink out. Just a helpful little bit there if you don't do it already. Don't be afraid to get that heat gun real close to you for a second. It's kind of like you're sealing up the bottom edge. All right, let's see, what do you think? You think this is gonna go well? I hope so. We hope for the first time. So I can't get this roll super far down there. So I have it a little bit tilted. Really just trying to get as much on the glass, nice and even, so it's not gonna fall back on me. 
and then kind of go from there. Because the more it sticks and then you pull it back, you're always dragging, like air is getting in between there and air drags dirt. Hopefully an insignificant amount, but you know, the less it has to come back, the better you're gonna be. I like this really nice big cutout too. I'd rather have it not be here, but it's ginormous. So it's kind of easy just to clear out of the way of the mirror and just keep going along. And what we also hope is that this windshield stays wet enough that nothing's really locking up on me super quickly. That way, gives me a chance just to get it all in place. I like to pull the liner a little early too. That was like pretty early, but just the way it started falling back, I'd rather have that liner out of my way and then get all this to tuck up. Away from the paneling. And then this plastic is kind of overlapped a little bit, so we'll tuck it down a little bit farther, bring it back up. I don't have a lot of time to show all my edges while I'm getting this in position. And then we also cross our fingers that this window is sealed very nice. Sometimes they're a little wide on all like the urethane and stuff. So you'll hit a little pocket of it and then you gotta like trim it off. So those are just everything that's kind of running through what I'm thinking as I'm installing this. What? Bankroll fill? <laughs> like this. I think this, yep. Little, sure shit. Ram. Little wide on my cut and it butts right into just a small little pocket of it. So I gotta trim that off. Unless I can just get it to lay down. Probably not. It's fine. But if there's one vehicle that I always pin on it happening, it's a rain. I'd say that roll went pretty well though. What do you think? Take your time. Excuse me. Take your time. Breathe. Don't panic. Watch where you're squeegeeing. We're also squeegeeing in a ripple pattern. So start in the center and just kind of like watch. Push some down, push some left, push some up. Kind of like a circle is expanding. Keeps everything nice and even. Seems to be going pretty good. That slight little bump there, <laughs> like a hair too wide. It's nicer when it overlaps. So if you have it kind of, okay, so this is the film or the glass. And then if your film is kind of like resting like this, where it rolled onto it, then you can trim it off way easier. If it's pushed up against into it and butts up and does this little thing, it's a little bit harder to trim out. So if you can overlap it, but it's a little little spot, so we'll just pinch it up against. Ooh, maybe we just got that sucker to slide under. That would be nice. It was really, really close. Hopefully it doesn't just sit there and pop up a little bit. But yeah, things seem to have gone, I'd say, pretty dang well. I haven't noticed anything. I've been just kind of eyeing 
exactly where I'm squeegeeing. Slight little bump there. <laughs> Do you charge a celebrity rate? <laughs> no. Maybe when we've maybe when we if we ever get to the point where we've earned it with like some super popular streamer's car or something. And then there's just like a giant influx of people that are like, oh, I need my car tinted. I saw you did that person's car. That hasn't happened yet. We're still another shop, just like everybody else. No, I actually, the first thing that I say, they're like, hi, I'm looking to get my vehicles tinted. And I go, do you know how many subscribers I have? Pull that card. Where is it? Okay, this. There's like one itsy bitsy teeny wee. Slight little dust looking bump here. Aha! Sweet. It is. You should tent every car Mr. Beast buys for people. Well, that would be nice. I think I'd have to move. I'll try and maybe I should just do more clout chasing. There's just not enough clout chasing going on here. You need to be more ambitious about it. How about you guys tell me some people to target and then I can message them. He could probably, I don't think he's, true, he could. He has it within his means to send, literally ship their cars over here and tint them, absolutely. But why? Why would he do that? We don't have like an, on, I don't know him. We don't know each other. He could also just send him down the road to another probably quality tint shop and then there, boom, there you go. <laughs> He's got bigger projects going on. All right. It wouldn't be the same. <laughs> Nobody would know, though. Although, he could make it the same. Essentially. Like West Coast Customs and Fit My Ride. You didn't hear about them until the show. So, same thing. You didn't know about whatever shop he would send people to until he did. This looks good. We're pretty close. As long as there's no hangups here, then we'll finish cleaning it up. We'll be very careful about pulling that rope up. That stuff was always so funny. Let's wipe this off with a new towel. I'm liking it. It looks good. I haven't seen anything alarming. That's nice. That turned out real nice. 
Heck yeah. So after we wipe this off and pull out the towel, the question is then, will it start? Did we break it? Don't, for Don't forget to take the towel. <laughs> I forgot it a couple of times. So somewhere out there is a couple of rams driving around with some yellow towels. Which really isn't doing anything bad for them. It's keeping that, that wiring protected from an inevitable coffee spill. Like you set the cup on the dashboard and then they turn a corner and then they're like, ah! And then those towels. Safe. There we go. I like it. Very good. Just little water pockets here on the edges. This end seemed to have stayed, so that's also pretty damn cool. Won't those towels fall? No, they're like crammed up under the, uh, like, in the wiring. So it's like resting on top of it, but there's stuff right up there that is also kind of like keeping it wedged in place. So you're kind of like threading a needle with it. It's just much easier than threading a needle. You're just like snaking that towel up over the wiring, but there's other stuff that's crammed up. So it's super easy for it to stay. So it's not gonna move unless you, you move them. Do you not do removals much anymore? Uh, I never really did much removals anyways, but yeah, I don't get a lot of them. Cool. We'll still wipe it down a little bit more, but for kicks and giggles. No craziness, so wipers are not going, lights are not going. Like nothing's flashing. There's one in the video, I accidentally, like it's super easy to freak yourself out. You bump that and the lights start flashing. But no, 91 miles on this thing and looks like everything's good with it. Started up, ran. Screen all works. There you go. Another one successfully tinted. So we can take these towels out too. I mean, everything was super well covered up. These don't feel wet at all either. So that's another key sign is like, you can put a towel there, cover everything up. And then, you know, if you pulled the towel out and it felt wet, then you know you definitely saved that window or save that car, but. I mean, we didn't, we talked about it to death, but I mean, covering up this dash compared to all the other ones, the only extra step we did was that wiring. But again, if everything's super covered up, you're not gonna have issues, it's just like, an extra protective measure that I think you, you probably should just take because, again, it takes you five seconds to do it and it could potentially save you $1,200 in an angry customer. So, just food for thought. We'll do some final touch-ups and uh, should be ready to go. Removal is terrible on cars. I'm in Arizona, so the films go bad cheap. I'm also super baked and hard to remove. Oof. Yeah, I'm sure you get lots of terrible removals there. I 
I would charge, I mean, I pretty much quote a full tint job for removal. That's without a windshield. So with the windshield, I'm like 350 for a removal. It's not business I expect to get. It's business that I'm trying not to get. But if somebody really wants me to do it, then I'll do it. It's just removals have never been a huge part of like any tint shop that I've been a part of. You get them here or there. I think most people maybe find cheaper places to go to for removals. I don't want to be those places. Or they're buying new leases. Like it's just kind of sometimes different clientele. So, you know, if I'm mostly doing new leases and stuff, I'm not getting phone calls from people with cars that are eight to 10 years old on average that have already been tinted before. I'm getting brand new stuff that's never been touched before. And the people that own it, if they had an old car beforehand, they're probably just gonna go get a new car anyways. So why bother? So that's what I guess is kind of, that seems to be the case for most of my work. So you don't see a lot of removals and I'm definitely not trying to do them. So I feel bad though. The people that I feel bad for are people that have like, they bought a car that they care about from out of state or something and they just want a nice tint job on it but it came with tint on it already from somebody that <laughs> didn't really care and they're like hey I want to fix this and then it's like ah shit I don't want to touch it I got quoted 300 yeah, I quote 300 regularly without the windshield. It better be bulletproof. <laughs> See, it's the skill that you're really paying for. There is money in the material, don't get me wrong, but a lot of what you're paying for for a tint job is the skill behind it. You're paying for a good job, and if you can find somebody to do it for super cheap, give you a quality product, like that's what everybody hopes for. But inevitably, there's always some hang up. Oh, they don't use a very good film. Oh, they didn't do a very good job. Every once in a while, you find an anomaly that just underprices himself, but. Most of the time, <laughs> people don't want to charge a little and then have to deal with the frustration of dealing with somebody that's like super nitpicky. So that goes both ways. Oh my God, just getting this one in. There we go. Whew. Where's the key? All right, let's close this puppy up. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the non-freaked out Ram. This is like how my next car was a full Ram after that whole post about a Ram. <laughs> so this is 50% on the windshield. 20% on the front doors, 20% over the factory privacy glass. So effectively makes it five, 20, and 35. So <laughs> I'm gonna call you Optimus because you transformed them. Autobots, roll out. I don't have near as cool of a voice, though. <laughs> I don't have that Optimus Prime voice. Ooh, I'm gonna wash out this mug. We're gonna get some coffees. 
So what time is it? Two? That's not bad. I have soapy water in here. I have a sink. I need to finish the drain on it, because right now it's just going into a Lowe's bucket. But... Oh, can I just say, I think everybody should have a splitter on their water lines and do one of these guys on the side. Makes cleaning out all your shit way better. Or just have a much better sink faucet. Because good God, I don't know how many shops I've been to with basically a bathroom sink faucet on their wash tubs. Get a better faucet. Then you don't need that separator on the back. You guys like this mug? I like this mug. This was from Rick. Sun Distributing. They gave me that. We still got. We still. Oh, I have to turn that. No, up, down, press that. I got my triangles. Heck yeah! <gasps> Never seen the lobby? We didn't show it that often because it was pretty trash. Now it's pretty awesome, so we show it a lot more. I don't want to get rid of this. I might leave this up all year long. Is this not the greatest Christmas tree ever? Me and my wife saw this when we were, uh, we were walking around a mall, and we just had to get one. So it leaves all these little like pelt things all over the floor if you have it turned up more. <laughs> but I like it. But yeah, look at this place. This looks good. Super clean. Oh, let's let's poke our head outside. Oh my god. Oh, and there's a Grand Cherokee there. Huh. <laughs> oh, this is like nice peaceful snow. I like it. I wonder if that is that guy that said he was going to come down. I don't have people that just park there very often. I dropped creamer. Roads aren't that bad. It's coming down real slow. Is that M&M's hood? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Alligator got the tri edges. What do you think? Dude, aren't they awesome? They turned out they turned out so nice. Where's my coffee? Come on. What the heck? Oh, there we go. It just started. Okay. I was really confused. Well, another one down. I'm happy with it. The green triad feels a bit more stiff than the blue or purple, but not as hard as the yellow or orange. I really like the way that they feel. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. I agree. I don't know what it is about the yellows. And I think I only have the small one here. I used to use the bigger ones too. Like I tried all of them. I'm like, what is this one like? When you get these a little bit wet, they're so smooth though. Um, so with the green, the blue, and the pur purples you can't get anymore. But blues, purple's definitely a little softer. The green, yeah. But it's like, it's like when you, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's just something you have to feel. They're super smooth. They're a little bit more rigid, but that's not a bad thing at all. It's just personal preference. And then, yeah, the blues are a little bit softer. So I use these for touch-ups a lot, and I have no problems using these for touch-ups now. So I, oh man, I just love how they turned out. It's super cool just to have something under the whole, like, triage umbrella too. But it's like a trophy.
Oh, I should take a picture. I gotta take a picture, too. Use vinyl pinstriping I found online, and it'll work pretty well. I'm guessing Glass 8 is even better. Yeah, if, so if you're only using it for the line, pinstriping's totally fine. Pinstriping can be expensive, though, too. So just, like, this starts at 7 bucks a roll. It's 6 if you order a 5-pack. Um, this is thicker. So if you look at the core of your pinstriping, it's going to be way bigger. It's going to be probably like a three inch core on your pinstriping. And then the tape's going to be about like that thick overall. So pinstriping is just much, much thinner. This, we, the core is like an inch and a half. No, it's like an inch. Inch and a half? Inch. Inch and a half. One of the two. I think it's like an inch and a half core. And then you can see how much thicker this shit is. So helps so when you're cutting, you're not digging into the glass. You're digging into the tape instead. So that was, that was the whole purpose. You'll still cut through pin scraping really easily. Let me clean up a couple little things and then take a picture. I'll let them know. Oh, that needs to stay open. The new green and only the new green and pink in my pouch for the video tomorrow and the green squeegee that I owe love. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to seeing it. I wonder if just even a glimpse would be amazing. I just, I want to see it pop up. That would be, that would be great. Didn't 3M kind of rip it off and make their own thing? No. <laughs> no. They've had uh, knifeless tape for a long time, long before Glass Aid was a thing. So, like, you might be thinking of knifeless tape, but knifeless tape is very much a different product. Um, with knifeless tape, it's, it's for vinyl. It sticks to the glass. Yeah, something like that. It sticks to the glass or sorry, it sticks to the paint or glass or whatever surface you want to put it on. And then it's got a fishing line thing and that rips through the vinyl. But vinyl is soft, so you can do that with vinyl, not window tinning. Window tinning is a lot more rigid and you can try it, but it's just, <laughs> it's not gonna peel through tint the same way that it can, can peel through vinyl or else, or else I'd be using that. Glass A would have never been a thing. Glass Aid was really like a cure for a problem that I had. Cannon. They're filming it on a new Komodo Red. I'm sure, it'll, I'm sure it will show what tools I'm using. Nice, very cool. I'm glad it just got there. What a good, what good timing. Phone screen versus actual RAM silver looks different. This lighting also plays a little bit of a different role in it too. So this is really soft, soft lighting. I wish I had a way to turn it off from here, but I have to go turn off the switch. Um, it actually sharpens everything up. Let me do that. Let me do that real quick. Can we do that? Yes. So one thing, one thing I didn't do with the with the Kia was show you guys what it looks like on a GoPro with the with like the overhead lighting off. GoPro. So like, there's going to be a slight color difference from under here, but when you take it out into daylight, which right outside we have nice snowy weather right now, so you're not even going to necessarily see it super well out there either. But if we shut off the overhead lights, everything's gonna be a little bit sharper. It's also a little bit darker, so it might be, I don't know how the camera's quite gonna compensate for it. But you see like all the sharpness with the lights now? The overhang ceiling kind of makes it look glowy and a little bit foggy. Now when you take that out of there, 
it's a little bit easier to see and it's a little bit darker, but if I can get the camera to kind of compensate for that kind of stuff, you can you get a better idea what that shade looks like. I'd have to have lights hanging underneath it or raise this whole thing up to sharpen up the lighting though. Okay, let's go all the way back over and then turn the lights back on because this switch turns on everything. They didn't give me a second switch over there. Meanies. <sighs> Cannon. How often do you cops pull people over for dark tint? Um, I don't know. It's tough to say. Most of my clients don't say that they've gotten pulled over for anything. Unless they're I'm being... Unless they're being really egregious with it. So if they're going like super dark, then yeah, I've, I've gotten a call before. And it was like, oh, I got pulled over, I gotta remove it. There was this TRX RAM that we did. And we did that pretty dark and then he sold it and then he did his charger and then his charger got pulled over. And it was like, no real big surprises there. But we pulled all the film on the front and he left the film on the back. Did the dryer sheet, did we dryer sheet the windshield? Yep, yep, we used dryer sheets on it. I used them for flat glass making. LEDs or incandescent? There's a mix. I'd like to change out all the lighting at some point. Um, lighting was something I kind of learned as I played around with the shop. So, um, I kind of assumed, I kind of assumed that more lights up top would make your, your space better, but it doesn't. You, you need a mix of like some nice lighting and then you also need white. So that's where this big drop overhang comes into play and really, really helps because I have a black ceiling. So if I paid, I don't know how much I'd have to pay but if I had a company come in and spray all the ceiling white, it would just, the whole space would be so much brighter and better. I don't know how much that would be though. I'm guessing a ridiculous amount, probably a couple thousand that I don't feel like spending on a ceiling. So I did this instead. Mirrors to add lighting without additional lights. Mirrors to add lighting without additional lights. Um, I think that'd still be expensive though, because the lighting's really not that expensive depending on what you, what you want to go with. Like there's some cheap ways to do it. Um, has the diffuser held up good? Yep, yep, diffuser's been great. I don't expect shops to do it. It's very different. Okay, let me, so good old Amazon, right? So T5, um, you'll see it in growing, but there's these, like you'll see these kind of sitting on the sidewalls of some shops. Pro tip, if you want good camera lighting, don't ever have a camera pointed at a light fixture unless it's really dim compared to the light that's coming at it. But if you're going for like this type of lighting, you can definitely put them on the sides and stuff. Just like I said, don't expect your pictures to turn out super great from it. Um, you want lots of overhead light and then keep your walls nice and clean. So white paint, don't do colors, just do white paint and then leave lots of stuff not on your walls. So the less stuff you have on your walls, the, the brighter your space is gonna seem. It's gonna be really nice. Um, but stuff like this was pretty good. Um, these are super cheap to run and they come in a big pack. But these are like the four foot ones. You can get eight foot ones. This is a six pack for like 50 bucks. Um, Let's see, so like 
you can find these, honestly, four foot eight lamps for a hundred. This is real hard to beat. So these are really popular. You can go to like grow shops and that's where you can just get these really, really quick. But you can also order them on Amazon and whatnot. So T5 bulbs, that's these little skinny bulbs. They get super bright, go for daylight, anything 5,000 and up. So this is 40,000 lumens, that's stupid bright, 6,500 Kelvin. So anywhere, I would suggest anywhere from like 5,500 and up, that's daylight. 6,500 is typically daylight, so just go with that. Um, but I have a mixture of like those lights and then some of the shop lights that came in here. And then I put strip lighting around the whole thing because I was just playing around with a lot of lighting at the time. I didn't really know what looks good and what doesn't. So because I have this big uh, diffuser overhead, I basically have to take the diffuser completely apart and then sneak, a, sneak the scaffolding to get to any of the lighting at this point. It's all blocked off. So it's kind of like I did the lighting, then put the diffuser up, and then just kind of like adjusted the diffuser. And it looks pretty good, but I would change the lighting. I would make it all even, probably put a few more up there, and probably keep the diffuser a little bit higher. And then cross my fingers that that looks better. <laughs> but part of the problem that I deal with too is there's two big white walls, one on this side, one on this side, and then it goes into more open shop. So all the light is bouncing from this area over that way. So when you look, point the camera here, sometimes it looks a little dark because it's competing with the lights. And then when you're pointing it that way, that's why we're doing from this angle here, it looks better because it's going into darker territory. Much easier to light things that way. It's kind of hard to have really good 360 lighting around anything. Kind of just need to have nice ceiling lights. <laughs> Hi, Nick. How are you doing? Does it sag uh, in the middle from the weight of the cloth? It does a little bit. There's uh, there's some type of bracing up there. Let's see. See that? That wire that goes across it? It's like... It's one to keep all the fence posting together, making it more rigid, and then also it helps keep it a little bit less sagged in the, in the center. I found this really cool. I was looking into all of this. I found this really cool. God, I don't remember what even I would look for anymore. There's this blog post that basically broke a lot of this down. Giant overhead diffuser blog. <laughs> oh, Google, you're so helpful sometimes. Actually, most times. I think this is it. Yeah, okay, so this is the build. This is the blog that I found. Building a giant overhead light bank. So a photography studio, you can see, I, I see this clear as day now. This soft white lighting here, this is all that diffuser. That's what you get out of it. Um, so there's 10 by 20s, but like they say here, this was 10 grand for this for just this one, and this is a Lotus. So this is a small little car. So this is a 20 by 20 setup. So a little more serving under cost of post by a photographer, nationally known, excellent post detailing. He described his car shoot, Studio 75. So like this is how some of these photography studios are, and now you can really see, this is exactly what my diffuser looks like. So they actually had a 20 by 20. And this is their space. Giant, tall ceilings. I think they said these were like 25-foot ceilings or something. Ridiculous. They have all this industrial lighting up here for photography and stuff. But trying to paint this and then, like, so the, you just need to scale everything. So they had this plan. 
And um, funny enough, the framing is just fence posting. So a lot of this hardware I recognize now, but they basically, this is the structure for it. So you take fence post, you take an elbow, you tie it all together, and then you put a cable in the middle to help, help it from sag. They, they went a step above and beyond. So they have chain hoists here, one in each corner. That's what I did too. But they actually hook it all, I think, to one thing to raise and lower the whole thing at the same time, which I would have really liked to do. But that would be expensive and tricky. Um, but they basically made one frame, hung all their lighting. There's a little time lapse of it. See, they got all the chain, they hook it to the center brace, and then they mount all their lighting to that center. And then they put the diffuser on the wider portion on the floor. So it's like two sections together. I just went with one and put lighting right above it. But they're dealing with a much taller space and they need the lighting to come up and down with it. Yeah, these things, these little cans right here. Yep, and then you haul it all up. Oh, they don't. They actually did had Ford people to do it, so they got to do that same thing every time, too. Damn. <laughs> you have three mats there to help. <laughs> and then they went around on a lift and raised all those chains up. So I guess they can't lower it up and down without going back up there and taking the chain up and down. I have scaffolding too. Scissor lifts are really expensive, especially to rent. You can basically rent scissor lifts for what you can buy scaffolding for. I've gotten comfortable with the scaffolding. I was super nervous before. But that's basically how the whole ceiling is right now. No tension ribbing. Yeah, just the, like the cable that's not even like I don't know. It's it's a cable thing, and I just pulled it tight and then cinched it, and it works. I don't think it's the most structurally sound piece ever, but it, nothing disturbs it, and and it's good. <laughs> My dad started his window tinting business in 40, uh, 43 years ago and started cars. Got into flat and out of the cars before he started shrinking the film. He said he would do, he said he would do the back glass in multiple pieces. Yeah, that's how they used to do them back in the day. I have to run a scissors before for commercial jobs with some contractors who will give me out there for a few. Oh, contractors would let you use their scissor list for a few hours. That's nice. Because looking up delivery fees, it was like a hundred and something dollars a day but then it was like another 180 for like delivery and then pick up. It was something, something like that. So I didn't go into this with like a super big plan, but basically renting a scissor lift for like three to five days would have basically cost me what it cost to buy the scaffolding that I have over there. So I was just like, screw it. I'm gonna buy some scaffolding and man, I hated scaffolding. But now I'm at least a lot more comfortable on it than it used to be. I stood on like the first platform and then like my legs started sweating. I was so nervous up there. But now, now you can just like rock the whole thing. And you're like, woo! Good times. Honeycomb LED setup. I was looking into that. This kind of stuff was really, really cool. But I think it would have hurt me more than it would have helped. So the, I think like this makes a shop look cool and you can take pretty cool looking pictures with it and it's probably fine to work with. But there's so, you can see like 
all the sharp lines reflecting off the windshield and stuff like that, it kind of makes it really distracting to show what you're doing. So for me, it didn't make sense. I think it looks cool, though. There's lots of different patterns and stuff. Get lit lighting. Oh. This you can all find on Alibaba anyways. I, I, all I could figure out was all these companies are just ordering this stuff from China and reselling it. I guess that's what a lot of companies do anyways, but it's basically just like Alibaba. <laughs> you just order it direct. More for paint, body work, and PPF work. Nice. That's cool. Yeah, because what you'll find with tinting, too, is you'll kind of, like, you always, like, tilt your head and get sharper lights to bounce off of where you're doing. So I could see how that would help. That would help for that, for sure. You know what I really wanted to do? I'll show you guys the video of what I really wanted to do. Um, it's crap if you have to suspend it. Oh, I'm guessing like a big drywall ceiling. Overhead. Oh God, what is it? I think it's just LED ceiling. So this was the first video. This is before Unbox Therapy did their whole garage with it. Oh, I'm so jealous. Okay. This. This is what I really wanted to do. Can you just show? Uh, it's right at the beginning. Look at that. All right, we'll skip forward. We'll skip through the whole build. There's a whole build video. Look at that. Oh, I'm so jealous. I wanted to do that. So you have LED strips, really bright ones kind of weaving through the entire, um, basically, basically it's drop ceiling with just the, the clear panels or like the frosted panels instead of the white panels. And you put lighting right, up, right above it. It's amazing. I wanted to do this so bad. So if you have drop ceiling, you could potentially do this. It'd be a lot of work, but you could do it. He made custom switches for it. So essentially what this gives them is like, you'll notice. I want to find an image of him sitting there. But he basically, this is like a whole build out video. Maybe I can't find it anyways. But when he just sits there and talks, I think it's coming up here in a second. Oh, it just looks so good. Especially with nice clean walls. Like, uh, you can't get any cleaner than that. Yeah, 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 he does. See? You just have really nice, even lighting anywhere you are in your shop now. Oh, it's so cool. Um... So this is what Unbox Therapy did, and they've had cars. I should just find where they have a car. What are some of the cars that they had recently? Finally bought an electric car, Mercedes. Okay, sure, like this. See, they're basically in a whole warehouse space and then they did the whole thing with RGB versions on the ceiling. Yeah, I wanted to do that really bad. But this place, it would just be, I'd have to have drop ceiling installed and, and it would be really, really expensive. I didn't even see this one. Yeah, he did. He went with the Batman's lair. Yep. I'm sure most of you guys had to have seen this channel. So it's a... Uh, Electronics channel, um, but he does do, because he can literally just pull cars into it, right? You can kind of see shop stuff back here, but the farther away you get, 
and you darken all that stuff up and just have the overhead lighting, oh, it's great. I don't know if he calls it that, but I would assume that's what they call it. Can you imagine that? Just like super even lighting through your entire shop. So dope. So this is my this is my version of that. But it's not near as not near as clean as that. This is the this is the budget way to do it. And even that wasn't exactly super cheap to do. Like the diffuser was like four hundred bucks. I just thought that when I saw it. Yeah, the old Batman, like, with Christian Bale. Yep, he's got that. I thought about that, and then I saw a video with the guy doing it in his office, and I was like, I want that. And then later on, I saw Unbox Therapy actually do it, and so I was like, damn. I ordered a Ford Lightning from Ford Lightning from my dealership, and out of 37 people who ordered, they only got one. Damn. Makes sense. I'm sure that car is that truck is super back ordered. If I had an EV, that would be it. The Mercedes. I'd probably have to buy the poor man's one. I like, okay, I like the look of the Mustang Mach-E. I think I saw some videos on how impractical it is. It's just not a very good EV, but I like the look of it. But this is if budget is a problem. <laughs> I'm sure I'd take the Mercedes over it. But I saw this going around, and I think it's way better styled than a lot of vehicles on the road. I thought this one looked really cool. It's like that midsize SUV. You know, it kind of looks like an Escape now. <laughs> Maybe I take it back a little bit. <laughs> I just This actually kind of does have some Escape vibes to it, too. <laughs> that right there. Take away the badge. I might be a little confused. I like the white and black, though. It looks good. What was that? That was the Mercedes EQS. Oh, this was a while ago, too. So he's mostly talking about the interior. So I'm guessing the beginning shots. Can we just show there something like that? Dang. Look at their lighting. I'm so jealous. But they use overkill cameras too. So if you take a GoPro in the same light, it'd be a little different. Nice. This gives me Civic vibes, though, a little bit. A little bit of Civic vibes off of this. But I'm guessing it's all about the interior, not the exterior. Which is why the video is, like, 90% amazing interior. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yep, that's super cool. <laughs> Yeah, hard to beat that. It's the size of the S class. I believe it. No, okay, let me, the curves. It's the way that that whole front end is. Look, I'm thinking of an old one. 06. <laughs> the, don't get me wrong. The Mercedes, far better. Oh, 
Or maybe a Prius. This guy right here. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, oh, we have to find where they do the grand reveal again. That. Oh, and then you got the front quarters. And then you get this. <laughs> Any tips on a 96 Pathfinder? Uh, not sure. Pathfinder is not something I got very often, especially in 95. Um, it's just that old Bronco style SUV. Probably not super fun. Just tighter seals, gasket, a lot of cleaning, and the rubbers are going to be a little bit tight, but it shouldn't be terrible. Just not super fun. I don't really have any tips for you on it, though. <laughs> Anyone with an EQS on an order is all of a sudden so triggered. <laughs> Probably. What do you think of a Xbell film? My buddy was telling me he got a quote for their XR on his windshield for 150. Um, yeah, it's definitely a little cheaper, but I, I pricing is tough to say across the board. Like. I, I, there were some shops, or there was one guy that wasn't too far away from me who was using like pretty premium film and then charging like 180 bucks for like a full car. They, they exist. So it's hard to say. Depends on the market. I charge 129 for XR, 249 for XR Plus. Say I start mine at 130 for color stable, and then I go up from there. 130 typically like with a full full vehicle. Let me let them know that this is done. Okay. Send them a picture of it. Yay. Is that all your film, film Geo? Because I know 3M has the color stable branding. Uh, yeah, it is Geo. There's a lot of people that use color stable, though. I don't think that's a thing that's exclusive. Exclusive to 3M, unless there's like a trademark by the color stable. But I know they have like the lineup called Color Stable. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm there right now. Yeah, I used to install it. It was abbreviated like CS on the box. That should look blue. <laughs> um,. So, yeah, it doesn't look like it's trademarked or anything because 3M trademark, automotive window film, color stable series. So it's just a roundabout way of all saying the same thing. So dyed film, I rifle off color stable way more than I should. But what I try and do is, is kind of throw that differentiator in there because you can have dyed films and then you can have better dyed films. So better always came with, the color stable moniker. Um, that was basically most companies put a different type of warranty on it. So color stable basically means that like, so you can have a dyed film and it can fade and not covered under warranty, but you can have a color stable dyed film. You could have it 
potentially fade, and then that's covered under warranty, but it's entirely up to the manufacturer. So some will, you know, like a phone, right? You get a warranty on your phone, but you drop it and it breaks or it cracks. That's not covered. You know that. But let's say you're holding it, and then all of a sudden, it, like, the screen changes to pink. That's probably covered under the warranty. Well, with window film, it can bubble, it can peel, it can fade, but some are actually designed to fade more in a way that just, you know, they say it's designed to fade that way, where they'll put stronger colors in the beginning to compensate for the, the color that will fade out of it over time, and it's not covered under that warranty, mostly because it was cheap, so they can't afford to do that. So it'll start out and look really like neutral or slightly green or something like that. And then a couple years down the road, it'll look more brown. I'm out back just hanging out. <laughs> Is that you can come in the showroom? <laughs> you can come on in. It's the one at the, so there's two back doors. It's the one at the corner with the sign. All right, I'm going to shout out some super chats and sign off here. See you sat yeah, Saturday we'll be back with the Durango for sure. Just received my Detroit Tin Studio shoes. Hell yeah, hope you like them. Thanks for the order. You got some triages in there, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, friend uses Solar FX, my cousin's Lumar, another good friend, Autobahn. Got to go with what you like and want to stand behind with your brand. Yeah, man, for sure. Every, there's always a different film for like everybody. Like, you don't always have to all use the same films. There's reasons why you're going to like one company over the other. But they're, at the end of the day, they're all going to be, most of the higher tier brands, they're all going to be good companies to work with. It's just kind of like who you get along with the best. Or, you know, maybe some companies a little bit closer for shipping times. Maybe one slipped up, so you just have a bad taste from that company. And then another person never had a problem with them. Like, that's why there's competition. That's why all that exists. That's why there's not just one film brand. So, big shout outs to KP, DC Customs, Nick Doolin, Pile of Shit, DC, and that's it. That's all for today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Um, hope you enjoyed. Keep all them Rams safe. You know, cover up the BCMs, cover up the dash, just all the things, and then you don't have to worry about it. You do your videos, what percentage do you do? Uh, we did 50 on the windshield, 20 over everything else. And then coming in at the end with Gator. Alligator window tint super chatted $5. Oh, thank you for the shank. That was a nice unexpected surprise. Aw, you're welcome. I was trying to give you like an extra green tool. I know you ordered so many of the, the side squeegees. I don't know if you ever got one of the green shanks, so. There you go. You're all greened out, man. You're very welcome, and thanks for the order, too. Thanks for the five. Really appreciate that. Alrighty, dudes. You have a good one. I will see you Saturday for sure. Hopefully sooner than that. Bye. Bye. Get some triages. Bye. I only use your green shank. That's the way we like it. <laughs> Later.